welcome to sims med prep dr kamran khaja is here so today this is a detailed webinar for lab so all all of the students please stay here so we will be discussing about all the detail about the lab exam what are the structure of the lab exam what are the resources of the lab exams and what are the like uh, pro tips for your exams and how you can do and next what are the visa process and after the visa process okay what are the things you you should do about the lab 2 exams and uh, how you can go to the uk to take your lab 2 and what are the academies that are very like beneficial for you and the next we will also be discussing about the cv making cv building and uh, your interview preparation so for all these purpose i have invited dr talha farooq uh, very like excellent student in his career he has been a very like excellent hard worker and now uh, he is a resident in uk in a hospital uh, and now i will be inviting dr talha farooq to uh, tell about his journey and uh, start the webinar thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr kamran uh, just to check uh, am i audible yes of course you are audible uh, thank you thank thank you thank you so much so welcome uh, to all of uh, the viewers watching us from uh, everywhere um, so as dr kamran described that we will be aiming to cover sort of all of the lab journey from starting from the beginning until the end and uh, i know that um, a lot of you are at, uh, at different points in different parts of the of that journey some some of you might be preparing for lab 1 some of you might be preparing for lab 2 some of you might be applying for jobs some of you uh, might uh, be applying for training jobs and um, so we'll try to briefly cover every part and uh, then i'm more than happy to be redirected by your questions uh, at any part uh, of the of the of the of our conversation if you have any questions you can raise them up and i'm happy to be redirected accordingly so that we can discuss those points which you feel are most relevant and which you feel uh, that you need uh, answers for Thank, so, you. Thank you, Dr. Tala. I'll be, I will be adding a uh, one point. Uh, so I will be requesting all the viewers, please comment your uh, like comment your all the answers. Okay, if you have any answer, you go to the comment section and post here. At the end of this session, we will be replying all of your questions. Thank you, Dr. Tala. Please continue. Thank you. Thank you so much. So without any further delay, um, again, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm as um, Dr. Talha, I graduated from King Edward Medical University uh, in 2021. I completed my internship in 2022. Uh, I gave my OET in uh, 21, then I gave my PLAB 1 in uh, 22, 2022, um, um, in August, I gave my PLAB 2 in March, 2023, got my GMC registration in April, 2023. Um, I secured a non-training job in England uh, last year in September. And after working for a few months in a non-training job, I applied for training. And currently I'm uh, working as a core trainee in psychiatry at Gartnerville Royal Hospital, Glasgow. So uh, let's just uh, start our presentation. If we could uh, please, uh, uh, if we could please uh, see the next slide. Uh, thank you yeah. so much, Dr. Kamran. So the first, uh, the first slide, as you can see, it's about the PLAB one exam pattern and structure. Um, we are. Technically, we are missing one, one, one exam before that as well. So let's start with that. So before going for PLAB 1 or booking PLAB 1, or which in the future it will be UK, MLA, AKT, knowledge test. Uh, 
uh, they, you have to pass an English language exam. So that's sort of the sort of the first step uh, in this journey, and that's the first exam that you have to give if you are considering uh, to get medical license in UK and practice as a doctor in UK. There are two popular uh, exams uh, for English, which meet the English language requirement. Uh, one of them is OET and one is IELTS. And I know that uh, uh, these days OET is very popular mainly because of the higher passing rate than IELTS. Uh, but some people, they still go for IELTS, especially one of the reasons uh, is because it's less expensive. And uh, those uh, who, who are confident about their English language skills and abilities and are confident that they can pass uh, an exam uh, like IELTS, which is a bit tougher than OET, uh, they can, of course, still go for IELTS. I personally gave OET exam. Um, it tests four domains of uh, English language, speaking, uh, writing, reading, and listening. And you have to secure a B, a grade B in each of that component to be declared uh, successful. Um, these days also there are some academies uh, that are offering OET language, um, OET exam preparation as well. But what I found personally most helpful was peer support. Uh, the best thing about the, 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 there are, as I mentioned, four components of OET. So when it comes to reading and listening, that is something that one can prepare on his own. Uh, just by using past papers and other sample uh, questions which are widely available uh, in the circle of uh, which will be available in the circle of your friends which are at the moment preparing for OET or have given OET. So just uh, by, uh, pre by uh, practicing questions uh, you can prepare really well for the reading and listening part and it sort of depends on your uh, prior for your training prior uh, comfortable uh, your level of comfort with english language but again usually uh, if you have um, uh, on average if you have uh, completed 10 to 15 past questions you are quite you can you you can of course uh, see your results in those as well uh, other two components, uh, speaking and writing, they mainly require practice. The more you practice, the more uh, your skills are polished and the more you are able to uh, get good grade in the exam. You just have to, what, 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 what I found most personally most helpful again, uh, first you just have to learn the format of uh, what's the speaking test, um, how, how do we, uh, know, there is a candidate, then there is an actor, and you're the candidate, of course, and uh, they, you have a vignette, you have to uh, counsel the, the actor, which is the patient, according to the given vignette, according to the given scenario in five minutes, and you are judged or you are marked on the basis of your speaking skills in those five minutes. Once you know the format, then you can practice some of the cards with your friends, get feedback uh, from your friends uh, who have given OET or who are giving OET with you. And in this way, you can, um, you can assess your performance and see which uh, are the areas, the weak areas to work on. And same is the case with writing. You first learn the format of how to write a letter. And um, after learning the format, then you move on, you start writing letters without any further delay, and then you uh, get help from a friend, a mentor, a teacher who can uh, check your letters, point out the point out the mistakes which you can uh, try to avoid next time, and sort of uh, what uh, me and a lot of my friends found helpful that after sort of like. Uh, five to ten letters and uh, 10 to 15 um, speaking card practices you're quite uh, you're quite in a in a way that you can you can really uh, either you you are you are good to go for the exam or you know that which areas are the are my weak points where i have to work uh, uh, further to improve my skills when it comes to the resources as i personally mentioned that we 
uh, or I personally, I did not use any academy, but there are academies, people use them. Uh, and I would uh, advise if you want to use them, especially if you do not have that level of if you do, if you're not uh, if you do not have that level of support from a from a circle of close friends who are uh, preparing those exams with you, you can always uh, you can uh, opt for uh, an academy which has good feedback. I do not have any personal spe specific recommendations, but yes, that is a that is an option to to go for um, and. Um, a uh, sort of a professional uh, help uh, for preparation and um, other than that there are uh, youtube videos there is a channel called e2 e2 or et uh, which, uh, which yes sort exactly. of... it's e2 uh, e2 language you can try this you can make a basic concepts about what is oet and how you can approach so it is very valuable resources of the fellow I acknowledge. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kamran. So, um, and don't forget if you are in that stage, if you are preparing for OET, an invaluable resource would be the official website as well, because the official website contains those instructions which are actually important and which are a lot of times overlooked or a lot of the time we are confused about, about those details and we are asking other people about those details, although they are quite clearly mentioned on the website that uh, this is this is this is these are the components that you have to cover in speaking these are the components that you have to cover in writing so if you go to the official OET website there are very very good instructions for the exam and also there are some sample past papers or sample uh, paper sample questions which of course uh, you can uh, use to get an idea about what the actual paper would look like uh so that's the first step once you are uh, now at which point uh, uh, i think um, you can attempt for oet definitely you can attempt for oet or ielts during your house job if you have made up your mind uh, previously but again if you if you haven't there is uh, you can always you know uh, give it a give it a start and you can uh, in whichever phase are you, you are you can uh, give the exam and once you receive the results of your exam uh, and you qualify, um, whether it's IELTS or OET, then you are eligible to book lab one exam. So that was just a brief uh, overview of the English language requirement. Uh, again, if you have any questions, you can, uh, you can about the English language exam, you can tell us and we'll be more than happy to answer. Moving yes. forward to this slide, the lab one exam pattern and structure. So uh, before we go to discuss the exam pattern, you know how to book the exam. You just go, you make an account with GMC, GMC online, uh, and uh, you put your OET scores there or your IELTS scores there. They verify it with the with the with the original resource with the web with the website of the of the of the language uh, test provider. And uh, after they are satisfied, then they uh, say that okay, you are eligible. Then GMC releases PLAB1 dates uh, in advance. Uh, uh, they tell you that we are going to release the dates on this, 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 on this date at this time. And I know that it's a bit, a, a bit of a sort of a, you can say a very, uh, a very tricky process. Sometimes you have to, uh, you have to sit on your, on a, you have to get good internet connection. You have to sit on your phone or your uh, laptop uh, at the designated time. And you try, you have to try to book the seat as early as possible because uh, a lot of the times, in a matter of minutes, the seats are gone. They have made the system a bit better uh, now that you can. Uh, they place you in a queue, sort of in a randomly. They place you in a queue, and once you you are inside the account, you can book the exam. Uh, again, a lot of luck in that area, but. It won't. It but if you are, you know, taking all the precautions, uh, the maximum delay that you can get is maybe three months. You that you are not giving the exam in, uh, in in May. You're giving in August. Such things can happen. But uh, other than that, you can um, easily you can book for the PLAB one exam. The important thing, uh, how to prepare for PLAB one. So it's a it's a, um, a theory written exam. It's based on. Uh, 
Uh, it is conducted four times a year um, in February, May, August, and November. And um, it, in Pakistan, it is conducted in Islamabad and Karachi. And it comprises 180 MCQ based questions. And uh, you have uh, 180 minutes, you have to fill a bubble uh, sheet with a pencil. It's a written exam containing of 180 multiple uh, choice questions. Uh, and what's the syllabus? It's mainly a clinic, a test of your clinical knowledge. So that's something to, uh, that's the, that's the main thing. It's a test of your clinical knowledge. So what it tests mainly is the clinical subjects, medicine, the allied specialties, surgery, allied, uh, um, the, 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 the component of the surgery and the allied surgical specialties. That is much less as compared to medicine and allied medical specialties. Then we have ob obstetrics, gynecology, pediatrics. And uh, when it comes to the basic sciences, although it does include uh, questions about basic sciences, uh, anatomy, physiology, pathology, pharmacology, but they are clinically oriented. They are not like uh, they, are, they are only they ask the questions, making them relevant to your clinical knowledge and the clinical practice. So that's why uh, your final year syllabus of our uh, MBBS curriculum that is uh, that is very helpful if you if you if you have good grip on that 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 would be very helpful in uh, getting good scores in the exam in preparing for the exam uh, that. You must use a uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kamran. So this is the this is a sample sheet. You can see that uh, we have options uh, A, B, C, D, E, and uh, they have how you are supposed to uh, fill the box. A lot of the times, this can create uh, uh, some sort of confusion among the candidates as well. That where exactly uh, to to which point exactly are we supposed to go and fill it you just have to mainly you just have to what we when we were giving the exam and we uh, told ourselves you just have to um you just have to fill fill the the the, the alphabet the alphabet should be covered uh, the alphabet should be shaded properly and uh, you can uh, you don't need to you don't need to form a full box and you know fill everything within that you, you you can form a small box within those within those two vertical lines covering the alphabet and then you can uh, cover that but um, i should mention that these things are uh, very uh, in my opinion very less likely to actually make a difference i mean even if you uh, um, even if you make a small a tiny uh, mark here and there it's not going to be it's not probably not going to be a big deal so it's uh, it's a good idea not to worry too much about such things. Just uh, just have a just have a brief idea. Just have a basic idea about what to do, and then move on with the. Can I add something, Doctor Pella, in this yeah, portion? Yeah, yes. Can I add yeah, something? Yeah, yes. Yes. Of course. Uh, in this case, uh, let me tell you all of the viewers. The um, most important thing is that in the lab, uh, there is MCQs that are 180 MCQs and 180 minutes. It means you have one minute. The most important in lab exam is that you have to manage the time. If you know the answer and you must need at least five to seven seconds to fill this, this is a very difficult. It is not an oval, it is rectangular. The first is the difficult part is that you have to fill the rectangular. And the most important point when you are going to the exams, you must carry your lead pencil which lead pencil you should carry you should know there are arts work you should go if you are living in lahore go to old and arkari or any bookshop uh, where there is arts work like they are selling some of the lead pencil that is used as artwork okay and that is not a simple let me show you uh, i have like this is my lead pencil i prefer this one uh, the name is mono art drawing pencil this is art drawing pencil it is not a simple pencil that is used the reason why art pencil should be used this is very soft when you will just put it on the paper in just three seconds two seconds you can fill easily 
it is a very very less 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 time is taken by this art drawing pencil and most important there are numbers of the pencils number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 the more you will go higher the more will be the shaded area if let's suppose there is a one number or two number of the lead art drawing pencil it's mean this will you will need a more force to fill that if you will purchase eight number nine number ten number it means you will have a more rapid shaded area so i am preferring this is what uh, like i discover this very huge point and i i watch many videos on there was nothing any video on youtube that is telling us this important step so to save your time you must have your soft uh, like rubber and your this uh, art drawing pencil not a simple pencil there is a difference of art pencil art drawing pencil and simple pencil this is this pencil is art drawing pencil i will send this picture in the group also so you should carry this okay in my personal experience this is the best one otherwise you can buy the other one and this is a huge that can take a very very less time during the filling of the sheet thank you please dr dalla please continue thank you thank you so much uh, dr kamran for such valuable information so um, and i would i would agree that this is probably the time management time management is probably the the biggest reason of uh, unfortunately why because uh, because of which sometimes candidates uh, they are not able to secure enough marks and have to repeat the test uh, over and over again we have heard that time management and that is why one of the one of the tips that we were told uh, at that time by some of our uh, friends and seniors and i would like to mention that as well is that try not to try not to skip the skip any questions um, because uh, probably i mean unless you have a very 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 good grip of uh, mcq exams and you know uh, exactly what you're doing but as a general rule as a general advice try not to in this in plab one try not to skip any questions uh, if you are unsure about it, you have to make an educated guess and move on. Otherwise, in most of the MCQ papers, in MCQ exams, it's better that, you know, in the first go, you just fill those, uh, you just attempt those questions about which you are 100% sure. Then in the second go, you uh, attempt those questions about which you were unsure because later on you might have some kind of, some bit of information that might help you with those questions. But in PLAB1 exam, the advice is, is just to, make an educated guess and move on. Try not to dwell on it. Try not to leave it and think that I'll come back to it later uh, because uh, you won't have time. Probably you won't have time. So uh, keep exactly. that uh, with the speed. That is very answer. important, Dr. Talaha. I really appreciate this information. I have asked to the many of the recent uh, exams taker and all of, the, all of these exams taker were saying that the time is very valuable. If you are like doing one MCQs, okay, at least either wrong or right, attempt it. Don't leave empty. This is very, very important information. You should write it down. There is no time, no time to come back because there are uh, 90 pages and 180 MCQ. This means on the front and the back, there are there will be maybe two or three MCQs or one MCQ sometime on one page. So you cannot find and come back to find that question. So Dr. Tala has beautifully described this. Okay, time is very valuable. So please, this is uh, next very important point. So the time management is very crucial in the lab regarding usmle uh, there is there is a one minute and 30 second but in lab there is a one minute so if sometime you are practicing like a question bank and all the other students who uh, compare these exams so you should also know that in usmle it is one minute and 30 second to attempt the exam one question in lab there is a, only one minute thank you dr tala please continue Thank you, thank you so much. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's move on to the to the study resources slide, yes. uh, regarding PLAB. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Kamran. So 
Yep. So the study resources for PLAB 1. And um, I would like to take this moment to explain to you that if you are worried that you will be giving PLAB 1 or uh, UKMLA part 1 in maybe uh, ne next year and you're worried that you know these things might change uh, let me assure you that these are at the moment uh, according to the information these are unlikely to change a lot uh, we are just changing the their gmc is just changing the names it is uk mla the main difference is that even the uk uh, uh, medical graduates will have to give this exam but otherwise the paper uh, pattern the content mainly would largely stay the same. Uh, UKMLA would also have two parts. The first part would be like PLAB1, and the second part would be an OSCE like PLAB2. So the study resources, all of which what we are discussing, would probably stay relevant with UKMLA as well. And uh, once it's um, up and running from August, uh, then of course we can see uh, if anything else, if anything new comes up, we can always uh, catch up with that. So study resources, uh, the first one is plabable, and that is probably, in my opinion, the most uh, valuable, the most important. And uh, I would say that uh, if there is one resource that uh, you know some of some of the some of the candidates, some of the students, they are of that uh, mindset that they say that just tell us one one resource or one book which will be which will cram and which will uh, you know finish and one book which can uh, which can help us really get through an exam if we're talking about that then plabable is probably in my opinion the a very very valuable and a very useful resource for plab one i personally used plabable and only plabable um plabable is largely uh, comparable in, in, in terms of content, it is comparable with PLAB keys. The difference is, of course, that PLAB keys are sort of uh, like uh, notes. They are notes of different uh, topics, of different, in diff of different specialities. But PLABable is a question bank in which you, you go to a category, like you go to medicine, then you start uh, uh, attempting the question. And um, if you, uh, then you read the explanation um after you uh, submit the answer you read the explanation if you attempted it uh, uh, falsely you get to know if you attempted it correct you still get to know the relevant information the other relevant information and that is how you keep attempt attempting it and uh, that's how you uh, move on and if plavable the resource is built uh, in an uh, in a in a fascinating manner uh, what I have recommended uh, to other people as well, what I would recommend to those who are using Plabable to prepare for Plab1 as well, try to give it, uh, try to revise it, try to revise it at least a couple of times. And when I, when I say revise it, I don't mean just complete it once and then complete it again and then complete it again. So that's the, that's the, that's the, that's a good thing about Plabable. And that's largely true about many of the other question banks as well, that questions, they tend to repeat themselves. So a good thing, uh, um, a smart thing, a smart move uh, to make might be that uh, you start a category and you complete that category 50%. Then you start the second category and you complete that 50% as well. Then you start the third category and you complete uh, up to 50% as well. You complete only half of the questions. Uh, and in this way, you can complete all the categories and you will uh, sort of, you will have gone through or you will have touched all the categories uh, one by one. And then when you come back to the first category and you will be attempting the questions, um, there will be many questions which will be repeating themselves in the in the in the in the second go and in this way you will not only be covering new information but you'll also be revising the old information so and in this way you can maybe you know in the second go you can cover the category up to 75 percent and uh, in the third go you can cover the category up to 100 percent and then in the in the final go you can cover all those questions which you previously uh, attempted uh, wrong uh, you can select those uh, to show only those which uh, which uh, you, which were incorrect and then you can cover them and this is this in a way it saves time uh, um, and it's uh, it's a smart move to make during practice 
and do do make use of the playable mocks as well they are again they are very helpful um especially in terms of time management since time management is uh, as i mentioned it's the sort of the sort of the the key to to getting through this exam it's a very important point to keep in mind so the mocks will really help you uh, uh, will really help you in um, in practicing that in practicing time management in making yourself uh, to, uh, up to up to the point that you can comfortably attempt the actual exam uh, without any trouble with the time so you can um, practice mocks with the with a sample sheet as well which we just saw that is widely available uh, you can practice you can fill the boxes as well just to make yourself comfortable for the actual exam so uh, and when it comes to plap keys as i mentioned the content is largely the same the content of the plap keys that's the same the same the same information is written in paragraphic form or in diagrams or uh, things like that or in flow charts and the same information is tested in the form of questions in plapable so uh, whether you are covering one or you're covering the other it's sort of uh, it's the same thing but what most people do and what most people have found helpful is that what they do is that first they read plap keys uh, they uh, cover a particular topic from plap keys then they uh, attempt the questions of that topic from plapable then they read the second topic from plap keys and then they cover the questions of the second topic from plapable and that is how generally that is how just the way that we are you know used to uh, study uh, we have been trained to study in this manner the first go through the textbook and then go through the questions and in this way you'll be able to assess your um, knowledge and your understanding of the concepts however um, uh, one might uh, one little one tiny problem with this approach that some people uh, may appreciate is that uh, if you have just gone through that topic um, from the plap keys, uh, your knowledge would be fresh. You will have read that information just now, and you'll be able to attempt a lot of questions uh, correctly, and you'll not be able to assess yourself uh, in a very correct manner, as opposed to if you just go to the plapable, if you just go to that category, if you just go to the questions of that category first, and you attempt them, and then you'll be able to realize, okay, so these are the questions that I'm repeatedly getting wrong. Maybe I'm getting repeated, I'm getting the questions uh, related to genetics. Uh, I'm getting them wrong or related to pediatrics, I'm getting them wrong. And then you can go to the plap keys and you can uh, study those topics with a particular emphasis, uh, um, making uh, knowing that this is my weak area. So that's also, again, that's something that's flexible. You can choose whether, you want to, uh, how do you want to go? You want to use only plapable, which some people do, um, or you want to use plap keys and then attempt the plapable questions, or you want to attempt the plapable questions, identify your weak areas, and then um, revise through the plap keys. But the content is same, the content is same. Past medicine, I personally do not have um, experience with the resource, but again, it is a, a resource which is uh, which is used and uh, which has people have given good feedback about this as well. If you have a if you have a personal, let's say, uh, an acquaintance, a friend who has recently used this resource, then it's best to uh, get some feedback from them, compare them, but uh, with with other resources and see if that's for you. The cost of plapable uh, and plap keys, that's not an issue. It's not, it's like just a, it used to be just a few thousands um, a couple of years back. I'm sure it's not much even today. So, uh, so that's, that's not a problem. You can start preparing uh, for the plap, plapable, uh, for the plap one exam as soon as you, um, as soon as you have booked your exam. Uh, it, doesn't require very it doesn't require uh, you know preparation for a year or so uh, like a uh, lot of the times um, a few months uh, for some people three months for some people four months that is usually on average that's a that's a good time uh, to to give uh, for plab one but of course uh, if you have more time and you want to give and you want to make sure because because we know that you know it might be really hard to get the dates of the exam again and again so if you just want to make sure 
um, that you don't uh, don't leave any chances and you want to give more time you want to give let's say six months you want to start preparing as soon as you have finished your OET that's that's perfectly fine but on the, on average people uh, people do find it uh, helpful that after three to four months of preparation they do find themselves in a in a in a confident position to go ahead with the exam uh and that's that's so that yes uh please dr kamna thank you so much yeah. um thank yeah thank you <laughs> and yes now we move on to the plab two so you give plab one then you wait for the results and again you follow the same cycle on the day that uh, the results are released um you are also supposed to now start booking the date for your plab two exam which is sort of a bit easier as compared to PLAB 1 because a lot of the people, they do, do take their time. They, uh, they are not in such a rush to book, the, to book the dates for the PLAB 2 exams. So it's not a race as it's not, you know, the race is not as competitive for booking the exam, uh, for booking the PLAB 2 exam as it is with PLAB 1. So uh, most of the times, even if, for example, if you, after getting your results, um, you book the exam like a couple of hours uh, uh, later on, or thing like that. It, it it would be okay. It won't be a it won't be a big issue. Um, PLAP two exam PLAP two consists of sixteen scenarios, each lasting eight minutes. These scenarios are to replicate real life medical settings, including mock consultations or situations encountered on an acute ward. So in PLAP2 ward, uh, in PLAP2 exam, uh, one thing that is, is uh, told repeat in repeatedly, that is mentioned repeatedly, that uh, see, in, they have already tested our clinical knowledge in PLAP1. Then why are they holding PLAB2? One of the main, one of the one of the key features, one of the main things that they are testing in PLAB2 exam is our communication skills, which is uh, largely referred to as IPS. When you'll be preparing for the exam and you'll be going to the academy, you'll be hitting it a lot. IPS, interpersonal skills, uh, and just to make sure that you are a safe doctor, that you are. Uh, making the decision you're not making those decisions that you're not supposed to make um, that only a senior should make and you are escalating the situation um, in time and you're just you're just prioritizing the patient safety at all cost so just things like that uh, they are love because they uh, it's not the clinic again of course the, without the clinical knowledge it would be uh, you would not be able to clear plap to exam as well but it's the clinical knowledge is not the main emphasis uh, and it's not the not the key thing that is uh, that is uh, used as a as a marking criteria in case of plap 2 but the communication skills what we have found of course there are many domains which are used for marking but what we a lot of us found and the with the feedback that i got from other people and with my personal experience as well i found that the, if you if, if 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 you ask me one thing that needs to be that needs to be practiced that needs to be polished for plap 2 exam that is communication skills and interpersonal skills uh, so you are in all of the those scenarios you are an fy2 a senior house officer in the ward or in the gp setting in the outpatient clinic or in the inpatient clinic or in emergency ward and there is a hypothetical there is a there is a patient there an actor uh, who is uh, who presents with a complaint and you're supposed to uh, go through the through the uh, history examination and then you give them the management plan how do you answer the questions after reading the instructions and patient information outside each room so there will be rooms 16 rooms and you will be going to one room then you'll be coming out uh, spending uh, around one and a half minute uh, outside the room reading the instruction then you'll be going in and completing that scenario in eight minutes then you'll be covering coming out so like this there will be a timer that will announce when to move on there will be at least two rest stations allow, allowing you to take breaks the whole exam will take around three hours uh, 
PLAP2 exam, so this is mainly the pattern and structure. Now, the most important thing about PLAP2 preparation for that, uh, we'll, we'll move forward, uh, uh, please, to see the, if we could please uh, uh, move forward yes. to the, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kamran. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. So PLAP2 resources and uh, PLAP, this is again, uh, a question, a confusion widely held among the candidates, how to best prepare for PLAP2 exam. Uh, if, um, as I previously said, the main thing that is tested, the main thing that needs to be polished is your communication skills. And how do you do that? If I am to describe that in one word, that is practice, 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 and practice. So uh, there are a lot of academies available. Uh, the two most popular academies uh, that were most popular in our class and uh, our seniors were Samson, which is located in Manchester, and Moshobi, which is located in Liverpool. Um, what sort of, how, how do we prepare? So there, here's a general guideline. The, the academy is to give us uh, an idea of what the exam is to make us comfortable uh, about the format of the exam. Uh, then we have the resources, uh, a large pool of the scenarios uh, similar to which might come in the exam. So a large pool of hypothetical scenarios which we use uh, to study, to prepare for PLAP2. We have notes, Samson notes available, Moshobi notes available. They cover a large number of scenarios from every speciality that can cover different types of possible scenarios that can, um, similar to which can come up in PLAP2. So that is the main purpose of, uh, first main purpose of getting an academy to get to know what the exam is like. But after that comes the real part of the, of the exam preparation, which is practice and we need to practice each scenario ideally each available scenario in the notes of whichever academy you're using in the notes of we need to practice each scenario with our friends uh, if we do not have any uh, a lot of people who uh, do not have any um, especially close friends uh, giving the plap to on, on the same dates they can practice with they can practice online uh, they can find other candidates who are giving the exam on the same dates and they can then liaise with them uh, to form a study circle, to form a study group, and then they can uh, practice with them. But that is the main, you have to practice for like, um, I, I would recommend that you should practice for like two, three hours a day for at least a couple of months before the exam to make sure that you are comfortable enough to give the exam. And then comes the last, part of the of the preparation which again takes us back to the academy which is uh, the mock exams the mock exams are again invaluable and they are precious uh, uh, in preparing you in giving you the confidence and in uh, teaching you time management because especially when we are doing practice we are not a lot of the times people are not keeping record of the time, whether it's six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, a lot of the times they are ending the scenarios in like nine minutes, 10 minutes, but in the mock settings, the academy, they, may, they make sure that you get only, let's say six minutes or seven minutes, and then they ring the bell. And in this way, when you go through these, and again, uh, both of these academies, I think they offer at least like uh, three mocks, three mock exams. So when you go through these mock exams, you are, uh trained in time management as well and you are very much acquainted and you get familiarized to the to the exam process as well so these are the three phases of plap 2 preparation the first thing to familiarize yourself with the format how do we do that we use the online lectures either from samson or moshobi we use the resources the notes which are available either from samson or moshobi the second step is to practice, practice, and practice in a rigorous manner. Uh, and this is the main step. And the third step is uh, the mock exams, uh, which will sort of, you know, give you that final push and you'll be 
confident enough to enter the enter the exam and give it a go dr kamran uh, would, you, yes, would you like to exactly. add something please yes uh, i will be adding something uh, because from the many of the our experienced doctors and our colleagues and our team member and other ambassadors uh, they have pointed out a very important point that everything is relative okay we are not endorsing any of the specific academy because there are many academies and i have like asked the many doctors they are saying that it's depend upon you okay what is your level of study okay so first of all understand yourself what is the, like your type of study if you like uh, like to read only if you uh, of course part 2 is very like clinical type and scenario type you can go to any uh, of course pakistani like in uh, environment if you have any senior faculty they can uh, uh, like uh, get a good idea about a simple practice test because i have been receiving many messages because uh, okay what should i do if i am living in pakistan you can go to any uh, like person who is like very efficient in clinical skills so it is you are not only a clinical skills it's your communication skills okay so try to get the idea try to get your like uh, remove your hesitation remove your sh like shyness go to like any hospital uh, which is nearby and uh, any senior who can assess you while examining a patient and uh, that can give you uh, assessment okay what are your problems before going to uk Uh, my recommendation is that you should do like this in pakistan go to any hospital and like try to uh, like remove your shyness uh, develop your communication skills and uh, it should you should be assessed by any senior faculty member any like uh, any like uh, it is preferable uh, like who has a degree from the uk but if it's not like but any person who is very very senior and know the clinical skills and uh, he or she can assess your like communications uh, i think dr talla is it best to go uh, far before going to uk to do like this yes definitely definitely dr gamran it's best to uh, you know get some feedback from some of the experienced uh, professionals in the field regarding your communication skills especially uh so that's a that's a, i think that's a really good advice okay so next we will continue with the expenses of the lab journey so, so dr talla please uh, tell oh, the students this is very uh, hugely asked questions uh, what are expenses expenses mm -hmm. expenses can i do this i can manage these and this so this is very important topic so dr talla will explain one by one step Okay, what are total expenditures? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kamran. And before I, before we start uh, discussing about the expenses, one last thing about um, preparation is that uh, it's another advice uh, that is very valuable. I think while giving PLAB to try to be natural, try not to be artificial. try not to just uh, you know uh, just uh, uh, remember some statements which demonstrate empathy and repeating them over and over again um, because if the examiner they find or they are suspecting that you are being scripted the word that is used a lot of the times is scripted so if they find that you are being scripted they might fail you they might actually do that so try not to be scripted try to be natural and that is something that somewhere uh, uh, while uh, somehow in the in the middle of the of the preparation that uh, that a lot that we discover generally that the academies sometimes uh, while they are very helpful a lot of the times and they are you know they gave us they gave us that idea and then they gave us give us those scenarios and those uh, Uh, those scenarios to practice, and then they encourage us to practice. But if we keep practicing on the just the same line, uh, like A, B, C to Z, uh, using those exact those um, things, it can sometimes you know we can sometimes sound scripted, and we can actually um, um, I know it might sound paradoxical, but uh, sometimes it seems that we are actually 
practicing ourselves to fail the exam rather than to, to pass the exam because we are practicing so much that, and we are making ourselves so scripted sometimes that um it sort of it sort of uh, you know blocks that natural they want to see you in your uh, natural way they want to see natural reactions they want to see real time interaction with the patient so it's sort of very very i know it's ironical and paradoxical and it's a bit difficult that although you know that you are acting and the examiner knows that you are acting but you're not supposed to act you're supposed to be natural so but yes, the best thing very, <laughs> dr tala it's very like uh, yeah. but usually most of the time uh, student are guided that you should be like your action should be like professional and this and this this is very important point you highlight there because all of these senior faculty who, who like they are very very professional okay they are assessing for more than at least 15 year 20 year they can assess that the person is just behaving like uh, already scripted or just behaving naturally so that is very yeah. important point that okay, if you get like uh, you you don't show any of your like clue that you have been a very scripted person so that very important point a uh, very important point behave naturally the key word is that in your exam stations while attending your uh, like uh, patients behave naturally that is a keyword of this uh, point. exactly you. exactly thank you so much dr kamran and how 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 do we end up behaving naturally we end up behaving naturally by not learning the scenarios by heart but by learning the approaches to different situations and by learning the structure of uh, a consultation so if we know the structure of the consultation we know how to approach different kinds of patients and different kinds of consultations then we'll probably behave more naturally but if we have just you know we have thought okay this is a this is the scenario of let's say covid 19 and uh, we have learned that scenario one by one and we have learned the questions by heart and we try to follow that pattern and uh, then we'll sound scripted and uh, there is a there is a risk that will get blown up so uh, this is uh, at least um, before we move on of course so now the uh, next part uh, total expenses of lab journey so it starts from oet oet uh, is uh, 455 us dollars uh, that that's a sort of a oet is uh, um, more expensive than plab one exam and uh, but yeah if for some people they might uh, they sometimes they they do choose to uh, give ielts uh, in place of OET, especially uh, because IELTS is less expensive, but that is again something that that's an individual choice because it's a uh, because as I mentioned that the passing rate of OET is higher than IELTS, so it can be a risk. IELTS can be a risk, and you might ending up spending more money in the long run. So um, uh, it's it's careful to uh, assess your own uh, to assess where you actually stand in terms of your English language skills, and then. Uh, move on to make a decision. OET is a relatively safer exam, although recently again uh, the 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 marking system it has it has become tougher. It has become tough and tough, and and a lot of the times again uh, in all of these exams, but especially in OET and PLAB two, it can be a bit unpredictable as well. That even that you have uh, you have prepared well and. Uh, there is still uh, that that small percentage of chance that despite you know preparing all that really well you uh, can be a bit unlucky on the day but yeah so this is was oet then plab one is uh, 255 uh, britain pounds uh, that sort of becomes somewhere like uh, that's again not 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 a lot i think it's somewhere around 1 lakh or something like that then uh, uh, then is probably the in the initial part of the journey of the exams um, and plab 2 is the is the point from where the expenses they actually uh, you know start from because previously OET, uh, OET, when we give oet plab 1 a lot of the times candidates don't really feel uh, that much investment that this much investment has been made but when plab 2 when they book for plab 2 then they realize okay now we have uh, invested a lot and 
after PLEP2, the next steps, they subsequently keep on increasing the level of investments. The UK visa fee is 100, 100, uh, around 100 uh, pounds for accommodation, uh, for attachment. This is the minimum cost. Uh, you will be ending up spending 400 to 500 uh, pounds. Uh, if you don't want to do attachment, if you just want to come back after the plat two, you might end up saving, uh, let's say, around uh, uh, 200 uh, pounds. But um, uh, it is highly recommended these days because of the um, level of saturation in job market to uh, utilize the opportunity of when you actually go to the UK for plat two and at least do an attachment or, uh, or an ALS um, to strengthen your CV. The fees of the fee of the academy, yeah, they might vary, but again, they come in the range of 400 to 600 pounds. And the flight, the return flight cost would be around 700 to 900 uh, pounds. The total, it sort of becomes around 3,200 to 3,300 pounds uh, equivalent to, I, I think it's better to, to think of it in a range uh, that at the moment, yeah, somewhere around uh, 12 to 15 lakh rupees at least so that is something uh, but the good thing about the expenses of uh, the journey is that you don't have to you know spend all of that at one point you are spending it in a duration of two years actually and the most of the expenses are being made in the last part when you're actually when you're booked for plat 2 and then you're when you're going to uk and you're making those so that's the that's the major that's where the major chunk goes so um again due to the due to the inflation and due to all that it the the price has significantly risen uh, but uh, again as compared to other exams especially usmle or amc still PLAB is a relatively very uh, less expensive uh, journey, and that is one of again one of the one of the key reasons why some candidates end up in a PLAB journey uh, as their starting point uh, to move forward, uh, and uh, uh, that's that's pretty much it about the about the expenses. Would you like to add something, Dr. Kamran? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, this is like uh we have discussed about all the expenses but everything is relative you show depending upon uh due exactly. to inflation it can vary so please understand that maybe due to inflation rate due to uh, like pound and the australian dollar rate it may vary it may be uh th at this time you are watching the video after one year uh, maybe students will be watching the video so it may vary so please understand that 12 exactly. lakh is a just rough estimation. It can vary and all the other things can vary because your accommodation, one student uh, like is living in a uh, like a, a small room and share, shared room and one like student is preferring a separate and private room. So the expenses can vary depending upon these type of like uh, uh, like acts. Okay. When you are sharing the room, it means there is some uh, like less expenses. When you prefer any student prefer the private room or any like uh, expensive room, so it can vary depending upon that condition. Exactly, okay. exactly. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. So, Kamran. So thank we'll, you. The next. Uh, yeah. Over next. Once again. Uh, a very hot topic uh, because when you when you're done with your plab one you start preparing for your plab two uh, now there are two pathways and they go parallel to each other you have to prepare for plab two you have to choose an academy you have to listen to online lectures you have to start practicing with your friends uh, you have to uh, do all of that and simultaneously on a in a parallel world you have to start uh, your visa process as well and uh, you have to start building your bank statement making your bank statement you have to, to start applying for accommodations you have to start the visa application then you have to go through the all the documentation the biometric process and um, uh, then the of course booking the tickets and everything so remember that after you clear your plab one 
this is even you will you will have to start for visa preparation even before you start uh, your plap 2 preparation uh, that is primarily because of the bank statement um, a lot of the doc documents are needed for plap 2 visa and we'll discuss them in just a moment but the one the one document or the one thing that usually takes a while and that usually uh, forces you to start the preparation Early is the bank statement. You have to show them that uh, the total expenses of your journey, of your return journey from and to uh, to and from UK, uh, it is you have enough uh, funds in your bank account to cover that. And uh, for example, uh, on average, you might say that uh, on average, you, we, people have uh, put different amounts on average around 1500 pounds. That is. 1500 to 200 pounds that is needed for that return journey of lab to exam and um, you have to show ideally at least twice or uh, if you can even more than that amount of in your bank in your bank uh, funds in your bank statement so that they are satisfied that you will uh, you have enough to cover yourself and you'll not be relying on any sort of uh, public funds here in uk or anything like that um, so uh, so that's something if you yourself uh, can show your own bank statement if you're employed you're earning and you have enough funds uh, and enough um, uh, and you have the justification of those funds uh, and you have those funds in your bank account then that is the best thing because that will save you a lot of documentation but if you're not employed or even if you aren't employed your salary is not enough uh to uh to to accumulate to um, to give to give you those funds or even if you have those funds but you cannot uh you know explain their origin and you can only explain their origin because maybe they were transferred to your account from some relative or some friend or oh i'm sorry some relative or your father or your parents or something like that in that way in that case you'll have to uh you'll have to declare a sponsor who is sponsoring you and the sponsor uh, the idea of sponsor the concept of sponsor comes with a lot of documentation including your relation to the sponsor sponsor's id card sponsor's declaration affidavit of he's sponsoring you why he's sponsoring you and, and um, then statement and your bank statement uh, either one of which um, um, if you are of course if uh, um, if you are showing someone as your sponsor his bank statement would 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 be would be enough uh, to show that you have enough funds to um, to you can show that you are maybe for example employed to show your ties back home so that's uh, the the main idea of while applying for a plap to visit visa is you have to justify a couple of things you have to justify that you are going there for a valid reason and of course we can justify that using uh, that we are you know invited for plap 2 exam you have to justify that you have enough funds in your account uh, to um, uh, sponsor that journey and uh, for that you can use the evidence of, of your salary slips your bank statement if you do not have that then a sponsor's bank statement your relation to the sponsor things like that family registration certificate for example and thirdly you have to show strong ties back home so that they are satisfied that you will come home after giving the exam so you'll not overstay your uh, you come to home to family you can do any sort of uh, um and but usually the employment is uh, considered employment is generally widely used as a employment and family these two are generally uh, widely used as a proof of strong ties to the home country uh, so these are a few things that you have to uh, in, in actually these are the few things that you have to justify while you are uh, making the application for the visa of course the technicalities and the details 
you come uh, across a lot there of are some uh, like this is a huge topic there are uh, because it's a relative also many of students exactly. have a different approach many of have different family background many are supplying because of because one one of student who is applying maybe have a, a business mind business setup and one student who is applying may have some only the property type they can show uh, that type of properties and one person can show that he is earning uh, himself he can show his personal statement or bank statement and job letter so it's a relative remember one thing when you are applying for the visa it's for relativity it means uh, what is best for you if if you are earning and you think that my personal statement is enough then you should carry your personal statement and if you think that my personal statement is not enough not enough mean it's not containing any of the uh, base amount personal statement must have amount at least six months uh, if not if you cannot manage uh, preferable is six months but three to four months is also fine if you cannot manage it the preferable is six month statement mean you should uh, amount must be present in that case okay you can like uh, debit or credit these amount in in between them if you cannot manage this then do a primary uh, like the person who will be sponsored so that sponsor may be any person preferable is from family your father your mother your brother your sister if there is any possibility that uh, there is other thing that you can show them that I have the good like relation with my home country Then carry your properties. Okay paper of your property where your name is mentioned. Okay, and of course uh, uh, There are some other documents uh, that can increase your chance of the visa uh, Like let's suppose if you are a, a, a like couple like married person you can carry the spouse like uh, certificate that I, I will uh, return back because my wife is like here in Pakistan or my husband is here. So it's depending upon its relativity, okay, how you will prepare for the visa. It's depending upon the personal to personal reasons, personal to person choices. Okay, so uh, let's continue, Dr. Tala. I think uh, I just wanted to highlight a few of these points. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kamran. So, uh, Let's just read through the uh, information and see uh, and discuss this uh, yes, one I, by one. Uh, one thing I remember, uh, Dr. Tala, I should mention also yes. that uh, there is when you are applying uh, for the visa, uh, letter of your financial support, okay? The letter of support must be present with you. If you are applying because I have been uh, like, I have visited the three countries, then I know about this visa system. And uh, you should know that when you have like sponsor, you should have the affidavit of that sponsor. Already the Dr. Tala has discussed about that point, ki you must have a proof. So that proof must be your affidavit. Your affidavit uh, will be mentioning that, uh, like if your father is sponsoring you, uh, it is preferred that you should write affidavit, uh, like your father will be mentioning that my uh, like son, our daughter like this has uh, uh, this and this ex and, and I will be responsible for our expenses and this type of statement may must be in the affidavit and most important is that uh, solvency certificate if any student do not about this solvency what is solvency certificate is you should tell them that uh, let's suppose you are we are sometime in, this is specifically for business mindset or business families they have some solvency certificate uh, what is debt and what is your net amount okay so it's mean what you have excluding your liabilities and debt that is specifically certificate is issued when in, in a business families so you should also have this type of uh, solvency certificate and uh, if you are doing a public sector job or private sector job in hospital you should have your salary certificate also salary certificate is very important and uh, uh, of course, you will have the necessary document with you, passport and ID card, your home address. Sometimes you should carry also your home address proof. Your home address proof must be your utility bill, which is at your name and uh, your home address. Of course, uh, your identity card contain your home address. 
and of course when you are going for the flap to booking i also recommend that you should carry your booking of your residence also while in uk let's suppose if you have planned that flap to i will go like in this state you should have your tentative plan that i will go to this state and i will live here and uh, there is my booking here so you should carry your booking booking depending upon if you have a tentative booking or some temporarily booking so i can suggest you uh, you can uh, get these booking from booking.com they can get you a temporarily booking you can cancel it okay but it will be valid until you will cancel it if you cannot manage you do not know what what i will do when i go to uk for the flap what should i do uh, so that that is a temporarily advice that you can go to booking.com and there are the option that no prepayment needed you can cancel it so you can get the these print of the booking.com and show during the visa that i have the booking i will go and i take my exams and this will also increase the chance of your visa so these are the few points because i have been very like uh, like in relay like uh, in relation with the uh, agents and i know these type of uh, visa processing systems so you should know that everything you must have in your in your uh, in your file okay you must uh, like have regarding regarding your situation so these are the different points for getting or increasing the chance of your visa thank you dr tala uh, i take more, more time so to much. explain this no 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 <laughs> that was very helpful uh, the good thing is that we no longer need a return ticket uh, uh, sorry uh, we no we no longer need to attach the tickets with the visa application that's a good thing previously exactly. we used to uh, get a dummy ticket from google and uh, a lot of people used to do that uh, and to <laughs> attach yeah. with the visa application like for yeah, example yeah. Uh, they used to use a, a uh, booking from uh, any website but the good yeah, thing is that you do not necessarily need to you don't need to book the return ticket in advance because you have to show it to the immigration while landing in uk that at this date i'm going back but for the purpose of visa application you do not need to book a ticket in advance the only thing that you need for the visa application is that as dr kamran mentioned you have to show them the uh, booking details where i am going to stay here i am going to stay uh, and do not worry even if you do not stay at that point even if you do not even if you cancel it later on after your visa gets approved you will not be penalized or anything and they won't look back into your application that you stayed here or didn't stay here and even if you have mentioned that um, my length of stay because it is uh, uh, recommended that you uh, mention um, in the visa application because if you mention a long stay um, it can get sometimes suspicious because what are you going to do for like, if you're just going there for an exam um, why are you going to stay for such a long time let's say for a month or two months because a lot of the people actually do stay for two months they actually do so for preparation uh, at the academy or they do so for the attachment or for some of the courses but it uh, these things are not very uh, highly looked upon uh, very these are not some of the things that are not very you know considered very good uh, uh, to to write them in the visa application in the visa application just try to minimize all these distractions and try to mention that you're going to uh, try to mention that you're going to stay uh, as little as possible uh, let's say for a, for a week or 10 days only and uh, do not mention the academy or things like that because that can sometimes complicate the situation because these are not some of the these are not very uh, let's say uh, very official um, academies that candidates are supposed to go through uh, for for the for the exams so this is uh, again this is something the ideal thing to do is uh, when you are applying for visa um, um, you should get in touch with a with a friend or a senior who has recently applied. Maybe get their visa application uh, and try to copy that. So that because you'll have a lot of technical tiny questions, you can always ask us as well. But uh, and but that's a very that's a very uh, good thing to do because when you're actually doing that and tiny little questions keep coming up, you can clarify them. But in this video, of course, we'll try to cover the major points, cover the uh, the important points that you should keep in mind while going through the process. Uh, do you want to add something, Dr. Kamran? Uh, yes, I think it was a detailed explanation uh, about the visa. I think many of the students have uh, like uh, difficulties regarding this. 
uh, okay because exams purpose exam structure and everything you can find uh, many videos on youtube you can just contact to the seniors but the visa is uh, every every person has its own way okay issues are like uh, many many from the visa because every person has his or her own story so i recommend here uh, you should know all of the points i have discussed that sit and think about that what is your strong point your world will be your thinking will be i will be telling the visa officer that i will become i will be coming back in my home country what is my strong point to coming back i have my property here i have my business here i have my job here this is my job letter this is my leave letter i have the enough money uh, to sponsor my visit i have the job let you show you my uh, like statement uh, less if you are not doing the job yes my father is sponsoring here is affidavit of my father of like he is uh, he is sponsoring me here is affidavit of my brother and whatever the person is that so all these documents if you are married show them the marriage certificate carry the marriage certificate if you if, even if it's not asked i know they do not usually ask when you go to pass a visa they only check majority of your passport and your flap to booking and uh, these are the two very important points because of course you will carry your flap booking details but the thing is that sometimes usually they ask okay and that can uh, make your cv more like valuable and they can immediately approve your visa and uh, they will think that the person is married of course he will come back person have a very good background history person has business in the pakistan he will come back person has from the uh, like family who has the money in account father is like doing like this job and he has the money so these all things is very important so uh, and the rest is filling the form this is we will make a separate video how to fill the form one by one step and what are the things you should do and what are the, you should not do this is a separate video because we uh, it will be a very lengthy filling up the form for the visa and all these things i will be making a, a separate video for that so we will be continuing the next doctor kala is there anything uh, in, in this section then we will continue the next no i think that's all that's all thank you so much sir to camera i think we can move we can move to the next okay. uh, section yeah so thank you so much getting visa for plap 2 again uh, we have covered sort of everything uk vi website this is the website the official website where we go we make an application there are categories of visa for plap 2 purpose we will choose visit visa the skilled worker visa category is chosen when we are going after we get the job the the, the documents required again uh, as i mentioned um there are uh, you the the key the key points that we discussed um, the documents that can show your ties to your home country documents that can show your ties to your sponsor documents affirming that your sponsor has enough uh, uh, bank uh, documents to um, with an affidavit that your sponsor is going to do that a documents of your salary slips your employment evidence your educational certificates oet your uh, letter for the plap 2 your passport your family registration certificate um so these sort of things are the ones that are generally required you uh, even when you will be filling the application there will be categories and you will uh, they will guide you as well regarding um, that this category should contain these sort of documents and you can get the help of that cover letter is really In case of a visit visa for PLAP two, uh, it's it's just going to be a simple letter. We just will we can of course will we can make a separate video for that as well. But we what we will do is of course in the cover letter we'll briefly tell them that this is who we are. We are a medical doctor from Pakistan. Uh, we want to work in UK uh, for uh, let's say for for, for post graduate training, and uh, we are giving some. exams licensing exams and this is the the, the plap to licensing exam which is only held in uk so we have to come here um and we are coming here in this duration we'll stay here we have enough funds uh, the evidence is attached we have enough ties to home country the evidence is attached so we'll be coming back we'll be staying for these number of days and that's that so in just in a in a in a in a, in a simple manner we just write all this information and uh we can use uh, the opportunity uh we can use this opportunity to clarify any points for example for some people 
the documents can be a bit tricky for example in your bank statement uh, there might be a, a transaction that can look a bit suspicious you might want to explain that in the cover letter so that the visa officer doesn't get suspicious of that uh, exactly. Exactly. so anything act of, of anything out anything of the you know out of the ordinary that is in your application that you feel or someone has pointed out try to explain that in the cover letter so that it doesn't get a problem uh, in in the future uh, actually uh, officially your cover letter you can think about that it is your information about your visit okay mean you you should put the information okay what will be you you doing what is your main like goal and who will support your application and this is a just brief summary you can say like this and you can clarify because sometime your visa officer first of all read your cover letter okay so and after that they see your salary certificate your bank statement other documents so your cover letter must be very uh, very like attractive uh, and having all the necessary information and uh, you 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 should think that this is your like favorable point so you should mention in your cover letter so it is very important thank you next dr tala please thank you so much um next uh, we have already discussed about the few of the other points also that uh, yeah. you should we have uh, uh, documents and cover letter tickets and uh, can you please uh, tell dr tala about the tickets accommodation and uh, a few points about this yes um, so regarding tickets uh, we sort of start you know booking actual tickets when we get the confirmation that our visa has been approved uh, because we'll apply for the we'll place the application for the visa uh, around three months before our um, uh, supposed supposed travel date so we'll have enough time after we get the decision um, of the of the visa to book for tickets so we can book tickets at that point and uh, the the recommended thing it to do there there are many apps which we can use to find the cheapest uh, available tickets but the widely one widely used is called skyscanner it's a it's an app available on play store we just go to the app we find uh, we're going from lahore to manchester or from islamabad to manchester and it will show a lot of the options we can find the cheapest option try not to book from there from try not to book from skyscanner just use skyscanner to find the cheapest flight available and then go to the official website of that flight for example if you use the skyscanner and you end up finding that the qatar airways is going from uh, lahore to manchester or uh, emirates going from islamabad to manchester that is the cheapest flight available so rather than booking from there and then uh, try to google the emirates official website go to there and from there find uh, try to uh, book the uh, book the the actual ticket it will save you some money as well and it will save you some possible complications as well of going through the that is very and, important yes. point dr tala i really appreciate you highlighted this point I, I i would like to add in this if you are buying the tickets because many of the students buy it directly from the website yet you because usually student go on the google and search that uh, buy the ticket for uk flights and that and that and you will be sh showing many of the websites like cheapair.com uh, uh, sastaticket.com uh, and uh, webvigo.net and flight.net and whatever the many many websites are available and uh, there is a system which is very important that official website is preferred dr tala has beautifully explained that of course you can find the cheap ticket these websites can give you an idea what is the price uh, i personally prefer uh, the websites please you should write it down these websites i i have found these are very reliable and very like uh, regarding is cheap and reliability factor is more on these that one of the website uh, dr tala has explained that about the skyscanner.net you can also go to check on the momondo websites very efficient website and uh, excellent website expedia.com we have also explained in usmle webinar that expedia.com is very professional website and these are international websites they are very reliable okay get the idea go to that these websites get an idea okay, what is the my minimum or what is my maximum price and next very important point i want to highlight here is that when you are searching for the tickets 
uh, there will be a question they will be asked like select that you are a one adult or two adult and you will selecting with the one adult and they will uh, uh, ask you it is a one way ticket or return ticket so if you are just uh, not like able to uh, book for the return ticket you you do not know okay, when i will turn so select the one way and if you know uh, you have a tentative plan because i will also be returning then you can select the two way like a return ticket and then after that there will be a three options one will be the best for you and next will be the cheapest one and uh, the different classes so preferable for pakistani people because i will be preferring go and click on the cheapest one on that cheapest one there will be a further options that uh, overlay overlay or without overlay because some of the websites are showing that what is called overlay overlay is that let's suppose a uh, one flight is going from pakistan and uh, uh, they will go to first dubai and then they will go to uh, like any other country and then they will go to manchester or london or like in uk this is called overlay and it's mean a uh, between your pakistan and in the uk there is a one country in between there will be a stay of two or three or four hours is depending upon which this is called overlay. Sometime for Indians, usually this happen that they have the overlay in between other countries, like from also the other countries. So there must be an overlay. So more overlay, it's mean the more will be your cheaper price. Very important point to be noted that the more overlay, the more will be your cheap. Your tickets will be cheap it's mean let's suppose when the total duration normally is let's suppose uh, you are usually is 24 hour or 18 hours so if sometime happens that you are overlay due to overlay it's more than 30 hours so it's more overlay it's mean more cheaper okay so it depending upon you if you are getting from the like like uh, uh, British Airlines, you are selecting Emirates and other expensive. So it's depending upon you and considering that you you will be staying in between. Uh, I will be preferring the cheap and then you will have to face the overlay also. So these are the few of the uh, basic concepts about the ticketing. And now I will uh, uh, request Dr. Dalla, please continue from the accommodation point of view. So thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, coming to the accommodation, um, of course, there are a lot of uh, um, pathways through which we can get the accommodation. Uh, the famous ones are, for example, if you have an academy, so, so this is what, how, how it's going to go. If your academy, um, you are going to give the exam in Manchester because the GMC exam center is in Manchester. If your academy is also in Manchester, let's say you book Samson, uh, which uh, so in, in that case you can of course book your accommodation in Manchester for like uh, whatever your duration of stay is. How to do that? Um, there are uh, a few options available. One of them is uh, um, is uh, um, uh, through 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 some of the what we personally did. Like we we can contact some of our immediate seniors or immediate friends who have been there. And there are some, usually there is some, um, a few times there are some agents who are at times uh, renting the rooms, giving the rooms and things like that. It can be a bit risky as well. So it's not always recommended to do that unless you have, a, who you have an immediate feedback from one of your close friends or close um, um, acquaintances or close seniors who know that they booked a flat via this person. They, uh, and uh, it turned out well. This is what we did as well. We booked the flat. And the Pakistan is there, but the but the standard the standard website uh, that is used for uh, booking uh, when we go to Plap2, it's something like Plap2 bookings. Uh, let me just see the see the just give me a moment to see the uh, actual website address. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, so yes. You can is... take time. No problem. Dr. Tala is seeing you. Uh, what is the website you can book for your accommodation? 
there are because many websites uh, in USA in UK uh, there are many 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 websites and local websites are very very efficient and cheap like if you are in Pakistan there are maybe local websites that are very cheap as compared to international when you will go to USA you will find the local websites and local like uh, apps that are very cheap so there are some also the other local apps local things to manage your all the like accommodation and all these bookings so dr tala is finding uh, the websites for your accommodation for the booking also so as i have explained that uh, these are the very like uh, relative uh, because many of the uh, students are going their parents their family members they are living already in uk so they they do not have the issue with like these ticketing and accommodation and some students, uh, some of like students, they do not have any family or relatives, so they can like face the issues about these ticketing and accommodation. So this is the best guide for all these people. Either you are from Pakistan, either you are from India, either you are from any other country. So and we, when you are going to UK, you should know all about uh, all about these hacks, how to book and how to live and what are the best way to uh, like decrease your expenses. So this is the best guide and please post all your question in the comment box and we will be replying at the end of this session. So I request all the viewers please comment okay your your questions okay whatever your question is we will be replying thank you thank you so much dr kamran so exactly it's uh i was just is this plap2 it's the website called plap2 accommodations.co.uk um, and this is sort of a, let's say, a company uh, which uh, sort of rents rooms around the area uh, in Manchester, in Salford, where uh, the academy is located or uh, near where the exam is conducted. And some of our friends, uh, uh, they booked via this company, plap2accommodations.co.uk. Uh, you can go there and they usually have the rates uh, from, let's say, 18 to 20 pounds per night to 35 to to around 35 pounds per night, depending upon the room, whether you it's a single room, it's a double room, you are staying together, how, how so depending on that, it can, you know, range from this to that. You can type in the check-in dates, the checkout dates, and it will give you the rates, and then you can find the most uh, suitable accommodation near the academy or uh, near the exam center. Um, try to, you know, try to get uh, the accommodation near the academy because uh, you're only going to go to the exam center once or twice at max once to just to see where it is located and secondly on the exam day and you can always take a cab for that but the academy that you're going to go every day so uh, that is something in manchester if you are choosing samson academy you're staying in manchester for a couple of months plap to accommodations.co.uk it's a good company to uh, go and you know book your accommodation uh, through uh, secondly, of course, as we mentioned, through personal contacts, through people uh, whom, uh, who uh, have facilitated your friends or seniors previously, we can opt that pathway, but only opt that pathway if you feel enough and if you receive good feedback. Secondly, uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, Dr. Kamran, you want to add something? Yes, uh, I want to add this. We are not actually endorsing and we're not sponsoring any of these uh, like websites or any of these academies. It's your exactly. job to find what is best for you. We are telling from our previous seniors experiences for Dr. Tala experience. And so it's your job to find and explore all these websites and find what is best for you maybe what we are telling will not be best for you maybe it is best for the few of the people so i request and explore all these websites and accommodation and tickets and everything according to your plan thank you so much thank you so um, um and of course there are uh, then there are other web websites available like a spare room which can uh, give you some options uh, um uh, for 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 short renting airbnb is sort of a uh, expensive so it's generally not preferred to uh, to to book through that um secondly as i mentioned if you are going to another academy i'm not sure about a lot of them but some of them like mo or some some of the academies they also provide accommodation so that can be a good thing especially if you're not in manchester if you're going to liverpool london uh, to swami or I, I don't know other academies 
you can always approach the academy directly their admin you can ask them if they have any uh, accommodation uh, avail available in that case it can be good that you can just you go there prepare for the duration and uh, before the day of the exam you can come to manchester stay at a place let's say even at uh, at a place at airbnb for example and you can uh, give the exam and go back the next day so uh, these are some of the some of the few uh, based on my experience some of the few options that that can be considered and can be gone through uh, and that's i think that's pretty much it about accommodation uh, for now yes next we will uh, continue with the protector stem oh uh, thank you so much so protector stem is something that's uh, not needed for plab 2 visa um, it is needed for uh, when you're going after you have secured a job and you're going on a skilled worker visa. So the good thing is that you don't have to worry about protected stamp when you're going to give your PLAP2 exam. Um, but when you're going to, for after you've secured a job, when you're going to uh, work in UK, uh, only then you... But it means is simply that whenever a, someone from Pakistan is going to a foreign country to work, then a, they have to, especially for the first visit when they're, when they're going to, uh, for successful immigration um, process, they have to get this protected stamp. What it means is it's sort of an insurance. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a one day process where you go to the local protector stamp uh, office of your region. For example, there is one located in Multan, one located in Lahore, one located in, I think, Didi Khan, depending on which area you are from you can go to the website uh, uh, of uh, uh, immigration directorate and you can find the, um, the the regional office you go there it's a one day process where you present them the contract of the job for which you are going and they just uh, you know after verifying that they can they uh, stamp your passport with the protective stamp it means that you're insured in case something happens in case while you're in the other country you need any kind of help then uh, your records are with the with the pakistani embassy uh, in that area and you can always contact them for for some help but the good thing is that if you're in the journey of just going for plap 2 you don't need that if you are uh, in the journey uh, in that point where you are applying for visa for a skilled worker uh, for job then after you get the visa you can get the protector stamp from your regional office it's not a not a very hectic process only one day process uh, moving forward for vaccinations for travel um, that is something that changes with time a lot of the time you know sometimes uh, they can say okay now we have put on this requirement for polio vaccination now it's covid vaccination now it's not these days there is no requirement um, these days that i've i've traveled uh, like at least I think I, I've traveled four times in the last few months and these days Pakistani authorities they are not really uh, bothering about any um, and even the foreign authorities the vaccination requirements they are not there at the moment but uh, previously of course COVID vaccination requirement used to be there which is not there anymore and polio vaccination requirements Pakistani authorities they put up some time um, and um, and we had to get that uh, maybe i think it was like a year a year back but uh, it's always a good idea to check before you are uh, planning to travel it's always a good idea to check with the with the with the with the with the official with the official channels or with some of the friends who have recently traveled to see if there are any new requirements that have been put up by the official agencies biometric appointment is the concept when you uh, when you have completed your application on the U on the UK VI website, uh, your application is uh, complete and you've made the payment, then you have to book something that we call biometric appointment. In simple terms, it means is that you have to go to somewhere where you have to present your passport, you have to give your fingerprints, provide your fingerprints, and uh, only then uh, your uh, application is then uh, forwarded to the, to the visa officer for processing. So this is also a time limiting step, a rate limiting step in the PLAP2 visa process uh, because biometric appointments sometimes they, we get the appointments for like uh, one month, sometimes for three weeks, six weeks. Um, if you are looking for an appointment at, um, at, a, at a near place like Lahore or Islamabad, um, you might get them uh, at a later date, but if you uh, are ready to travel 
further away like to mirpur for example or karachi then you can get the appointments maybe a week later as well uh, so that's mainly that would depend upon um, your uh, your your uh, how much in a hurry are you and when do you want to travel after the biometric appointment in case of standard pathway because if you in standard standard pathway it usually takes around 2 to 4 weeks and in case of priority it usually takes around 1 week so according to that you can always decide whether you are opting for uh, uh, where to go and which date are you opting for your biometric appointment so it's just in simple terms you complete the application then you book a biometric appointment where you go present your passport give your fingerprints and your application process starts and another important point to consider is that biometric appointment date that is the date before which you have to submit all the documents online documents which we have discussed previously the bank statement this and that and that and this you have to upload all of that on the official website before the biometric appointment date so you can complete the application way before uh, time and you might not even have uh, you might not have uh, you know all of the documents at that time uh for example your bank statement may still be in the making uh, but before the biometric date 24 to 48 hours before the biometric appointment date you have to uh, submit all the uh, you have to upload all the documents on the official website of the of the UKVI partner VFS so uh, you will be definitely be guided uh, through the process as you will c- complete the application and you will be given the instructions on how to move forward tb clearance police clearance uh, that is these are the two of the certificates that are needed again for skilled worker visa when you're going for job not for plap 2 visa um so we'll we'll discuss that later on uh, when we'll be discussing the skilled worker visa application the family registration certificate that is required for plap 2 visa because if you are showing your father let's say as a sponsor then you have to present a family registration certificate from nadra uh, showing the proof that he is in fact your father or if you are showing your mother as a sponsor that she is in fact your mother so that serves as a proof uh, and that's also serves as a proof of the family ties that you have uh, back with your home country so family registration certificate is uh, required bank statement is required but uh, bottom line is there is no single no document in all of this that takes more than a week except the bank statement so you don't have to worry about any document that it will take over oh, that much amount of time uh, the only thing that takes time in terms of documentation is your bank statement which you have to start preparing ideally um, 6 months if not at least 3 months if not even some people have gone through with one month as well but we wouldn't recommend it so 3 months is a safe is a safe limit to go with uh, for the bank, for your bank statement in which the 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 required the requisite amount of funds should be maintained in the bank account for uh, this duration without any major alterations without any major changes and the waiting times for if you are applying for standard visa after biometric appointment you will get your decision in around a couple of weeks or uh, maximum up to a month uh, if applying for priority you might get it the very next day as well but uh, usually in 5 days you can get the decision but again that is something that sometimes varies with the with the time of the year with the month so it's again a good idea to check with your friends who have immediately applied or check with someone who has immediately applied regarding how much waiting time because uh, uh, when we for example i think uh, last year um, same time of the year the waiting time used to be 4 weeks for standard uh, uh, visa processing but these days even in a couple of weeks or a week even i've seen people getting visa even with the standard pathway so that's something that can vary but again uh, on an average Uh, ma- in maximum up to a month you should get uh, your visa unless there is a force uh, any any kind of problem going on so that's uh, that about this slide uh, if we could please uh, move forward uh, yes thank, thank you, you so we much. will continue next our uh, next process job search thank you so much so um so we skipped that part um we completed that part sorry we how to prepare for plap 2 how to give plap 2 how to apply for visa and then we've come back we are waiting for the results we got the results of plap 2 let's say in a couple of weeks after that the first step as soon as we get the results of our plap 2 we can start applying for jobs um uh, uh, some people they do not 
apply for jobs until they get their GMC registration. If you want to do that, you can do that. But as soon as your PLAB 2 is cleared, you can apply for jobs anyway because uh, uh, you will get GMC registration anyway in, in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, how to get GMC registration? Uh, after you have received your PLAB 2 results and it has been uploaded on your PLAB, on your GMC online uh, account, uh, GMC online account, uh, you will be sent the details of by the GMC, or you can find the details on the on your GMC online website about how to apply for GMC registration. You will have to fill an application on the GMC online account. It will just ask you about your previous employment details, about your previous education, um, and it's a it's a very straightforward application. It would take 20, 15, 20, 30 minutes about your one year house job internship. And after you submit that application, uh, since they already have the results of your OET, PLAB 1, PLAB 2, so they are not needed anyway. But um, then they will ask you about uh, for, for, for a few documents via email. They will ask you for your MBBS degree, for your one year house job certificate. They will ask you for your uh, good standing certificate with PMDC, which you can apply and get in a couple of days online from PM, PMDC website. They will ask, ask for your OET as well, although they do have your OET results, but uh, they want to make sure that your OET has not expired because OET can expire after a couple of years. So uh, you got to have uh, uh, the OET. So you, at the time you apply for the GMC, you need to have a, a valid OET. So they will um, OET and um, and that's about it. Maybe a cup, maybe uh, one or two other documents, uh, but uh, mainly uh, these are some of the documents that we generally uh, already have. Um, and they all, will also ask you to verify your MBBS degree via EPIC, ECFMG EPIC, uh, which also shouldn't take more than a week. Uh, uh, and after this is done, uh, they will hopefully give you, send you the GMC registration certificate unless they have any questions, which they would ask you and you can clarify that this happened this way. But most of the time it's a relatively smooth process and you're able to get the the, the, the registration. As I mentioned, I got my PLAP two results in March, uh, sorry, in, in I got I got my PLAP two results. Uh, I, got, I gave my PLAP two in March and uh, I got my results in first, uh, I think in the first week of April and I got my GMC registration in like second or third week of April. So. Um, as soon as you're done with your PLAP 2, you're back home, you should apply for PMDC Good Standing Certificate. You should apply for um, verification of your MBBS degree from ECFMG EPIC. Um, and uh, that's that. And I, these are the only two things that you need. Other than that, you have the rest of the things, OET, house job certificate, MBBS degree, things like that are already there. So as soon as you receive the results of your PLAP 2, you fill the application of for GMC registration on the GMC online uh, account and you get the GMC registration pretty uh, quickly. Uh, and after you get the GMC registration, of course, now you're eligible for applying jobs. But as I mentioned, you can, of course, start applying for jobs even before you've got your GMC registration. Even when you have re received the results of your PLAB 2, you can start applying for jobs at that moment as well. Now, how to apply for jobs? There are two things that we'll discuss on this slide. One is which websites to use to apply for jobs, and second is, how to strengthen your CV, how to make your CV attractive. There are three uh, levels of jobs in UK at the moment, three levels where people are applying for jobs. One is the junior level jobs, second is the middle grade jobs, and third is the consultant level jobs. Um, the, but we'll of course be as fresh graduates, most of us will be applying for junior level jobs, which would contain FY1, foundation year one, foundation year two, um, Trust doctor, clinical fellow, junior clinical fellow, core trainee one, core trainee two, core trainee three, specialty trainee one, specialty trainee two, specialty trainee three, um, um, clinical teaching fellow. Uh, these are some of the common terms for a junior doctor in UK, and uh, we'll be looking at these roles. On the right hand side, uh, you, there are some of the websites. In each of the website, the procedure is the same. You have to go to the website and you have to make an account. In your account, you will upload all your details, your employment history, your qualifications, your experience, things of that sort. And then you'll search for jobs. Um, you can search for jobs using keyword, of course, like as I mentioned, the junior doctor level uh, jobs, you can use the keywords like clinical fellow, the trust doctor, FY2, foundation year, things like that. 
um, you can always use filters like uh, you can search um, for um, uh, for foundation doctor and uh, um, uh, and uh, medical and dental staffing jobs you can use that filter and then you'll have only the doctor's jobs coming up and then you can um, um, you can filter them with the lowest salary uh, first and you can you'll see the the junior level jobs in the uh, on the top but that's again something that as soon as you'll go to the website and you'll start navigating you'll learn some of these tips and tricks by yourself so track jobs, T R A K track J O B S track jobs. This is one of the commonest uh, website that is used for to apply for jobs uh, for UK by people. Um, again, the procedure is the same. You go on, you make an account, you start searching, and you start applying at all times. So there won't be any time where there won't be any any jobs available at all time. There are junior doctor, multiple junior doctor jobs available. The recommendation is that try not to limit yourself, try not to narrow down your, try not to be uh, very uh, selective, just try to apply uh, and, and most of the jobs or junior level jobs so that uh, uh, you can get into the system. And after that, of course, you can um, to go to your specialty or move to a different role of your preference uh, with time. A common thing that people generally miss is that track jobs is not the only website that is used to apply for jobs for UK um, because track jobs only covers for jobs in England and Wales, but UK also has two of the other countries, Scotland and Northern Ireland in it. Uh, so they have their separate websites, NHS Scotland and NHS Northern Ireland. So these are, you have to go separately to their websites and you have to separately make accounts and apply for jobs on those websites as well uh there is another website called nhs jobs that is also something similar to track jobs it also contains um, uh, jobs from england and wales and that is also that can be used uh, uh, to apply for jobs as well for academia jobs like for example in our country we have in pakistan we have things uh, we have uh, um, job job positions like demonstrator in basic sciences so things like that here we call them teaching fellows. So for teaching fellow jobs, you can apply uh, in academia. In that case, you'll have to go directly to the university website. And from there, you'll have to apply. You'll have to see the vacancies and you'll have to apply for the for the teaching fellow roles if you are interested in teaching and, or those kind of roles. They'll also require for DMC registration. And most of those will also have some clinical component, like one day clinical role, just so that you are up to date with your clinical skills and you can keep your GMC registration meanwhile, but they will be mainly related to academics, teaching, building curriculum, uh, medical education, and things like that. Um, these are for the non-training jobs, of course, for training jobs. Um, once you, again, it's not recommended to land in training job as your first job in the UK. So uh, for those who are starting the job journey, the uh, websites that I have already mentioned would be pretty much it. But for those who already have secured a job and are seeking a training job now, the website that is used to uh, apply for training jobs while in UK, that is Orient, O-R-I-E-N-T, Orient. Again, you go there, you make your account, the training jobs are advertised. There are two cycles generally in a year, in February, one in February and one in August. There are two intakes and you start applying uh, for August intake. Uh, the, the applications, they uh they open uh, in uh, fairly uh, qu qu quite a few months back and for uh, february intake just like that so you just have to uh, it's a good idea to go to the website and see the updated dates of when the next uh, training uh, jobs are to be advertised and you can um, apply for that it it would require a separate video to uh, uh, elaborately go through to how to apply for training jobs, what are the different requirements for different sort of training jobs for different specialities. So we'll not be going in detail uh, uh, in this one. But the bottom line is, again, uh, the first thing that you have to do, of course, is you have to apply for a non-training job. And for that, the key websites are NHS Jobs, Track Jobs, NHS Scotland, NHS Northern Ireland. Make an account on all of these websites and start applying for jobs. And uh, that should be it. And as you'll navigate, as you'll uh, you'll um, uh, navigate through websites, you'll learn a lot of things by yourself as well. 
and on the left hand side how to build your cv a very common question of how to strengthen your cv while you're filling the application which are the points to highlight which will make you stand out from the other candidates since there is again a lot of uh, job saturation uh, unfortunately at the moment in uk so these are some of the things that can make you stand out uh, audits if you have done an audit or a quality improvement project that is highly valued even if you have done even if you have completed only one cycle of the audit that's something that uh, that that would be that would be valued in your cv if you have done bls als acls atls uh, that would be very valuable if you've done a clinical attachment in uk that's that's very valuable because that would mean that you have experience of working in the nhs there are two things that pretty much um, are um, can be problematic for newcomers to an nhs job one is the system of how exactly nhs works um, uh, what's the primary care what's the secondary care how do the referrals go and how does how do things happen and secondly uh, the it system the electronic health record systems although a lot of the hospitals of pakistan have started using the electronic health record systems at the moment but still um, um, we are far behind as compared to uh, uk or us so um, if um, um, in the clinical attachment you will get exposure to the electronic health record systems it systems as well as the actual system of how uh, medical care is provided and how medical care is um, uh, is regulated in uk so that would give you an edge and that would give you a benefit over the other candidates uh, who do not have any nhs experience or a clinical attachment in the nhs um, and that's one of the filters i mean uh, when um, um, when uh, due to the large pool of candidates applying for jobs uh, for each job the, uh, the 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 ones who are filtering for candidates to apply to 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 invite them for interview they apply different filters and one of the filters that is generally applied is a um, prior nhs experience so clinical attachment is probably among these one of the one of the uh, one of the most uh, important uh, can be one of the most beneficial uh, thing in your cv membership exam depending on which uh, speciality are you interested in you can give an you can give mrc psych paper a depending on your um, uh, on your interest you can give them a membership exam to show that you're you're committed to that speciality and, and to sh to show that you um, you're enthusiastic to pursue your career yes, so it's again very valuable uh, teaching experience or a teaching qualification that is highly valued again in uk so if you have a teaching experience whether formal or informal uh, a formal teaching experience can include of course um, a job in which you had a teaching role like a demonstrator for example informal teaching roles we uh, have them uh, we all of them all of us have some sort of informal teaching experience which we can mention in our cvs like for example teaching medical students at bedside during their house jobs or as uh, medical officers or things like that um, or any kind of webinars any kind of um, um, uh, conferences, case presentations, anything that we have done, we can definitely include that and um, form that as some sort of a um, use that as um, to strengthen our CV. And a uh, teaching qualification, like a certificate in medical education, a certificate in medical teaching, a six month certificate, things like that, that can again, that these are some things that can make you stand out, especially if you're applying for a, a, a clinical teaching fellow role. And research, of course, again, uh, shows your commitment to evidence-based uh, publications. That's, again, something that would make you stand out uh, in terms of your CV. But while filling the application, uh, apart from all this, uh, while applying for specific, so these are some of the general things that make your CV stand out. But while you're applying for a specific job, the most important thing that you can do, the most important thing that you can uh, um demonstrate to 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 increase your chances to get a to get a job interview that is one personal statement or supporting information which is always um, you have to provide at the end of the application um in which you can show how exactly do you meet the requirements of this job and how exactly do you meet the person specification criteria um, if we could please move to the uh, next slide dr kamran um, thank you Yes, Dr. Tala, thank you so much, Dr. Tala. I really appreciate this detailed guide. Uh, all the viewers, this is an excellent guide by Dr. Tala.
I firstly have watched many videos in, on the YouTube and this is I think the first of this video Dr. Tala has explained the full detail job hunting. Job hunting is very like a, a, a topic that is less explored by the YouTube and all the other residents because uh, Dr. Tala has explained honestly and beautifully and all these experiences in a just uh, a, a smart like way. So this is a very valuable information not available on all uh, uh, like YouTube channels and on the different websites. So please uh, note it down. Uh, I really appreciate Dr. Tala for Thank this so detailed job so hunting world. Thank you so much, Dr. Tala. Next, our application. Yeah, so for the job application, as I mentioned that uh, the two most important factors when applying for a specific job, let's say where you're applying for an emergency medicine role or a surgery role, the two most important things which which would be which would be uh, you know which would be making you uh, qualified for the interview that would be your previous employment. For example, if you're already working in that specialty, if you have a previous experience of working in that specialty, that is something that would that is that is way more that is way stronger than any other point in your CV. So, for example, you did your house job, one year house job, and then for one year you've been working in in emergency medicine, and now you're applying for an emergency medicine role. So that means that you know you are a you're a hot cake for that for that job, and you are a very good candidate for that job. And the second thing to make yourself stand out in your application is supporting information or personal statement uh, each job has uh, in each advertisement there is a person specification criteria in which they mention that what sort of characteristics are they looking for what sort of qualities are they looking for in the person that they are looking to hire for that job and what sort of qualifications are necessary for that job so you have to read that very carefully and the in the supporting information and personal statement you have to justify how you meet the criteria of uh, the person specification and how you will be eligible uh, to complete the job description and, and, uh, and the associated details. So use this these portions very well, and uh, these can be these can these can really make a difference. These can really be the 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 things that that make you eligible for the for the interview your employment history and your supporting information. So in terms of a general those are the things we need to, um, you know, we need to do to uh, strengthen our CV. But in terms of applying for a specific job, these two things are the most important in your application, your employment history. Uh, and also do mention in your employment history that what was what was your job description in that role. For example, if you work for one year in an emergency medicine and now you're applying for an emergency medicine role, do highlight what exactly was your job description and how exactly were you doing and what kind of patients were you seeing while in that role. That would uh, that would be of immense help um, uh, to you uh, in the process. Unfortunately, um, uh, some people can get uh, a bit uh, depressed because uh, um, on average, the job waiting times are at the moment like around three to six months. Uh, but um, the, the only advice is to keep applying, the only apply, uh, just keep improving your CV, keep improving the application. The quality of the application matters more than the number of applications that you apply. So always focus, always focus on the quality of application always try to tailor the application according to the job description according to the person specification according to the job advertisement um, that is better than uh, randomly applying the same um, um, the same information randomly filling the same information in every application and applying for different jobs um, so uh, usually people they get their first interview some people they get their first interview after applying for 10 jobs some people get it after applying for 50 jobs some people get it after applying for 100 jobs but if you are persistent and if you keep improving yourself uh, because of course you uh, we are assuming that while you're in your home country you're working uh, you, there is no you're not having a career gap so you're working so your cv is getting improved by every day as well and uh, you are making your uh, application better as well with every moment so uh, you will eventually get an interview. Um, and that's the thing that's generally said about the UK journey, that every qualified person will eventually uh, get, a, get, get, a, get the reward. And finally, uh, when the good thing is when your application, when you're shortlisted for the application, you're invited for an interview, which is conducted 
remotely over MS Teams usually. Uh, so how to prepare for the interview? That's a, that's of course the next step. Again, the NHS interviews are not typically like the uh, the interviews that we have uh, we are used to uh, giving here. For example, in our home countries, they are very structured interviews. They usually divided. Uh, there is a panel usually consisting of clinical and non clinical medical and non medical staff. And um, uh, there are two types of questions that they can ask: clinical questions and non clinical questions. Among the among the clinical questions. Um, uh they can ask you questions relevant to your speciality for example again if you are applying for a job in acute medicine they can ask you question about sepsis if you're applying for uh, um if you're applying for a job in psychiatry maybe they can ask you or, or for example in um, uh, in psychiatry for example they can ask you a question about uh, any common psychiatric illness uh, if you're um, so that would largely depend upon the, the clinical questions which largely they would uh, depend upon the specialty that you're applying and the non-clinical questions they would revolve around a few uh, a few concepts audit or quality improvement projects they want to know uh, how, what do you what is your prior understanding of audits or quality improvement projects and how committed and motivated are you to continue doing that in, in the in the future job they would want to know your enthusiasm and your commitment to that speciality and your future plans. For example, uh, let's say if you say that uh, um, uh, if you apply for a for a role, let's say in uh, internal medicine, and uh, the best, and they ask you in the interview what what would be your future plans. So to you know to align the answer with that job, the best the the, the best answer that that they would be looking for is that they would be hoping that you will be completing that uh, you'll be using that non-training job as a transit route to eventually get a training in inter internal medicine and then get a higher specialty training so they want to know how committed you are to career progression and how do you want to use that job and what benefit are you trying to get out of that job so that's something that they can ask they can ask you about evidence based practice how do you continuously keep improving your practice? Um, do you use reflective practice, which is sort of a common phenomena that uh, is encouraged here in UK, that you keep on reflecting on different experiences that you undergo daily with your clinical encounters with the patients. Uh, so they might ask you about, uh, uh, about different scenarios where you had to reflect on your behavior and then you had to improve it. Uh, they can ask you about uh, your communication skills and what uh, do you have to offer uh, with regards to your communication skills to the patient. They might ask you about different uh, scenarios or if different difficult scenarios uh, while working in uh, medical settings. For example, some of the uh, usual questions are: um, Can you tell us about a about a scenario about a, about a situation where you had difficulty while working in a multidisciplinary team can you tell us about a scenario about a about a, about a real life situation where you had to deal with an angry patient and how did you manage it and what did you gain out of it can you tell us about a scenario where you had to deal with an angry relative how did you deal with it can you tell us about a scenario where you made a mistake then what, how, how did you what did you do to improve it uh, then uh, how would you deal with a difficult colleague uh, let's say a drunk, a colleague who has come up, who has come to work as drunk. So things like that, the practical sort of you manage that. Uh, so this is uh, the, the, a lot of the questions are of that sort, where they sort of you know uh, test whether you uh, use the reflective practice, the reflect the reflection uh, on your um, daily experiences to continuously improve your practice, or you do not do that. And uh, these are some of the questions that we are generally not. Uh, used to answering so uh, uh, it's a good idea to there are some available resources and uh, we'll try to uh, provide you as well uh, which uh, do contain um, similar questions and uh, uh, some tips on how to uh, answer them uh, so these of are some course, of the, uh, the clinical uh, so I, us, uh, I will be requesting uh, all the viewers who are watching seems mat prep is a platform uh, this is platform for all of you people okay so we will be providing the resources we will be providing the highest uh, of the highest yield content and stay with us and follow our our like youtube facebook and all the social media as well as the whatsapp group for your daily questions practice and all the other activities
and uh, i myself deliver a daily free lecture on the youtube from 8 pm to 10 pm so you can watch this this is free on youtube okay so you can come daily to build your concepts and as well as if you have any other questions any other problem so text us on the whatsapp uh, i will be conveying uh, i will be replying if i am not able i will be conveying your message to our ambassadors to our all the respected senior faculties and of course you will get your answer uh, thank you dr tala please continue thank you thank you so much uh they range from like 10 to 10 minutes to half an hour and some of the interviews might actually contain some uh mock scenarios as well like lab 2 uh, where you have to interact with the patient and you have to explain something concept something and things like that uh but they would of course uh, uh tell you in advance if they are going to arrange something like that um if you're applying for a teaching fellow role for example they might ask you to do, to deliver a short presentation a short lecture on a topic of your choice uh, that can also that's so uh, but the thing is that the questions are really structured and if prepared well uh, you can you can easily you can uh, get good marks in your section so i uh, and most of my friends we have personally found the interview to be easier Uh, to prepare for and get through then the application part uh, where you have to you know apply for a lot of jobs really to get some interviews but once you do get an interview uh, you you do have uh, if you if you fair value you do have a have have a, have a good chance of uh, of getting the offer uh, if we could uh, please move to the next step um, uh, to the next slide please dr kamran thank you yes of course of course we are going to the next slide um so once you clear the interview you usually get your results after a couple of days or maybe maximum up to maximum in a week you get your results via email usually or sometimes the consultant can also call you and can communicate the results to you and once the results have been communicated that's a good thing that means that the hard work is done now comes the documentation which can take a couple of months at least or up to 3 to 4 months even for some cases uh in which you have to clear pre employment checks you have to uh, uh, clear some um, you have to provide them uh, some references from your last 3 years of employment and uh, they would email them uh, email your uh, supervisors your consultants uh, with whom you have worked for the last 3 years and they'll just ask them to fill some uh, uh, some general really not a very big deal and uh, um, they ask for some for police clearance certificate which you can get in a couple of days from your local uh, dpo office uh, they will send you occupational health form in which you can provide the details regarding your vaccinations uh, they can uh, do an id check they can do that online as well in which they can ask you to present your passport and verify your identity or they can uh, do that in person when you do arrive to the uk uh, but the good thing is that Uh, don't when you have come to this step you do not have to worry because this uh, it is very unlikely that after getting a non conditional offer the offer will be withdrawn or something will happen that will uh, although it is possible but it is very unlikely that this happens so the, this is sort of a safe zone it's just a documentation bit and it might take a lot of time and hr usually takes a lot of time to respond back a week weeks even sometimes but the good thing is that uh, this eventually does get done and um, it sort of varies from trust to trust as well some trusts have different pre employment check protocols some have different but these are some of the usual things that sort of all trust to occupational health check uh, criminal record clearance certificate uh, reference check uh, id check and things like that and once the pre employment checks are completed then uh, they provide you with certificate of sponsorship uh, which you can then use to apply for skilled worker visa uh, which we'll discuss in the next slide uh, please Dr. Kamran, if we could uh, uh, slide. Uh, I am going to the next. Going to the next. Thank you so much. So that's it. Certificate of sponsorship leading to visa application. Uh, once you get the certificate of sponsorship, 
now you can place again uh, you can go back to the ukvi website just like you placed an application for the plat 2 visa which was the standard visitor visa now you will place a place an application for skilled worker visa it is a lot easier and it's very smooth as compared to plat 2 visa you just have to you don't need uh, a lot of documents all you need is uh, your certificate of sponsorship uh, the details on your certificate of sponsorship you will uh, enter those details in the application portion and um, and uh, once you do that of course uh, once you complete the application you will again get that biometric appointment uh, like last time in case of plap 2 visa you will uh, book a biometric appointment uh, prior to the biometric appointment you will upload the documents you do not need a very long set of documents this time you just need your certificate of sponsorship your passport your gmc registration certificate your oit uh, certificate uh, and uh, police clearance certificate and your TB screening certificate. Uh, that's TB screening certificate. That's pretty much the only thing that sometimes takes a bit time, maybe a week or a couple of weeks. Um, uh, so it's best idea to start that as soon as you uh, get uh, the non-conditional offer after the interview. Uh, you can. There are some centers, Aziz Medical Center in Lahore, in Pakistan, uh, and um, there is a IOM. Um, center uh, assessment center in Lahore as well. Um, you can go to that. Uh, you can you can just Google TB screening uh, valid TB screening test centers in Pakistan, and you can go to their websites, book an appointment. You will usually get them um, in a few days or maximum in a couple of weeks. And again, it's a one-day process. You can go there, get a chest X-ray done, and they will issue you a TB uh, screening uh, certificate. And you can upload that. So these are the, these four, five, six documents are all that's required for a skilled worker visa. That's a fairly straightforward application, and you usually get the get the outcome as well. Even if you have applied for standard uh, visa, you usually get the outcome in, in in two weeks at max. And then of course you can uh, you can move to the next part of the journey where you can apply for uh, you can get tickets, accommodation. Uh, and things like that. As soon as you uh, you do get the certificate of sponsorship, you do also ask the trust if they have any accommodation available where you can reside, uh, because that would save you a lot of expect expenditure, especially in the first month. Um, you do ask them for any relocation package which they can provide, which a lot of trusts do. You can ask them for a bit of shadowing period, uh, at least for a couple of weeks, because you're new to NHS and you want to be safe. If even if they do not provide any shedding period, it's the best. It's, it's a it's a good idea to uh, to voluntarily do shadowing for a couple of weeks before starting the work because um, uh, it can be a bit difficult to directly start the work in that in the new system with all the new uh, new things uh, straight away. Uh, but that's that's. Uh, I'm sorry, we uh, moved too. F I think we um, I, 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 we we uh, moved a bit too quickly. Uh, but we sort of uh, we were trying to cover everything, starting from lab one, and get ourselves settled here. Uh, and that's the um, Dr. Kamran. Would you like to? Do you think we should add anything else before we move uh, on to uh, the yes. questions part? Yes, I think uh, it was very extensive. I I really appreciate. All of the students, all of the doctors, all of the residents who are here watching us, seeing us, and if you are not live, who are watching this video after our uh, like uh, live events. So I request all of the students and all of the doctors, this is a life changing video for you. And uh, this is a total explained video and uh, honestly explained by Dr. Tara. Many of you, you are YouTubers, and many of the other things do, they, they just only focus on the labs, well, structure, exams, and that and that. But the main issue is that many of the insecurities, many of the problems are like you you will face when you will apply for the job. And this is a best video. I I personally myself uh, uh, wants to explore many things. I I listen many YouTube videos and I watch other like websites, videos and everything, but there is no video. Honestly, uh, this is the best way. Uh, the more core of our, the video point was, Dr. Tala has explained all of you with honestly and in a dedicated manner and explained the job hunting very beautifully, explaining all the websites 
and because this is a major because this is a key point what what, what the seems met prep is unique now okay we want you we want you to activate your confidence to uh, for like making you a doctor making you a like a, a valuable doctor okay we are not just telling all these information written on the websites we are telling the experienced guide so that's why i really appreciate uh, from the core of my heart dr tala has explained uh, the beautifully that practical points okay so i will be now requesting all the viewers please uh, subscribe us and join our facebook page also we usually update uh, different information uh, our free lectures okay so stay with us and now question session will be started uh, so i will be requesting that you post your question in the comment section and one by one we will be answering now i will be going to the next slide questions okay so please post your questions now ask anything if you like have any issue any problem and before going to this uh, next sessions i will be uh, highlighting a few of the most important points the students usually ask that is usmle versus plab uh, first of all we will clarify this question usmle versus plab and then we will be replying one by one to all of the specific uh, answers so dr tala i think this is a questions uh, usually students compare uh, what is like usmle and what is the plab as dr tala has explained beautifully what is plab one structure what is plab two exam structure and what are resources what are the visa what are how to um, uh, to go to the making CV for PLAP 2 and getting visa and visa uh, uh, covering letters and all the like documents and then you go UK, you go uh, to book your flights and tickets and then you go for checking accommodation, you live here, you give, take the PLAP 2 and then Dr. Tala has explained the job hunting uh, and then explain uh, interview preparation and all the uh, other things. Now, what is USMLE? What is PLAB? <laughs> Which is best for you? This is a question. Uh, first of all, number one, the answer of this question is, first of all, uh, what are your resources? If your resources are up to 40 lakh or 35 lakh, and you can afford these type of like enough money, and number second, if you are consistent, very passionate, and number three, you have the budget, you are consistent and very passionate, and you want a huge future regarding the money and like opportunities, then USA is the first option. USA is the first option. If you do not have a 40 lakh money, a 35 lakh money regarding to Pakistani rupees, maybe in Indians, you can convert it. Uh, all the Indians are from the Nepal and all the other countries, the viewers from all the other countries can convert it. So it is like a Pakistani rupees, 40 lakh, you can convert on your country values. So this is expenses for US mainly. If you are passionate, dedicated, and uh, having this type of resources and money, and then go for US mainly. First priority is US mainly, uh, my preference. Because when you will be getting your residency in the first year of your residency in USMLE, there will be uh, like most likely 55 to 60,000 per year dollars, okay, pay for all of you. So it means it will be more than 1 crore 50 lakh in PKRS, Pakistani rupees. You can convert in, in your relevant country, relevant country currency. So it will be 55 to 60,000 per year in USA. But in UK, it is very, very like less as compared to US. So the difficult structure, difficult exam of USMLE is no doubt very difficult and there is expensive, but the very fruitful. Next is, if you do not like have this money, if you cannot manage all these resources, so next plan should be your plan. If you can manage up to 15 lakhs, we average say that in Pakistani rupees is 12 lakh, you can convert it into other currencies up to 15 lakh if you can manage 
and if you uh, need that i don't want to go for a two year uh, consistency like studies and dedication and that and because of course your simile wants some uh, dedication and some consistency but lab is a little bit uh, like in in exam uh, like quality there is a uh, less like hard as compared to usmle uh, but it is a little bit easy as compared to usmle and very cheap like up to 12 to 15 lakh so if your expenses and your resources and your timeline and your management is like matching with this criteria and this money resources go for lab okay so usmle versus lab it's depending upon your choice it's not from me it's your choice your money resources your family connect and most important is next family connection family is living in uk go for uk family member living in australia go for australia family member is living in uh, usa go for usa because recommendation is a word used in international level recommendation mean it's you can say that when any person living in UK, USA, and any other country, and he or she can recommend you in any hospital, that can increase the chance of your job. So whenever you have any person, any family member, brother, sister, mother, and any other like like uh, close family relatives, so go to that country. Because due to future insecurities, there must be a huge role of connections or recommendations. So this is a brief summary of USMLE versus lab. Fruitful and future and security, of course, USMLE is on the upper hand, but you need a more dedicated study, more like a dedicated plan and consistency you will need and the more resources. And next very important point for USMLE versus lab is that the USMLE match rate is 58 to 60%. It's mean if you are applying for USMLE, there is a chance that you will be matched and getting residency in USA. Your chance out of 100 is like 60, 58 to 60 percent. But in UK, there is a greater chance of 70 to uh, 72, 3 percent. I would like to uh, correct me, Dr. Tala, uh, what is the uh, like job rate? And uh, I think I have heard that oh, it's exactly. You're you're right. You're right, Dr. Kamran, it's exactly around this, exactly. Exactly. So it's mean uh, job rate is more uh, in the UK as compared to USA. Uh, of course, USA is like saturating and uh, more likely uh, it will be declining to up to 55% of the match rate uh, due to the recent increase of international graduates. And also, of course, the UK match uh, like job rate also has been decreased because of the nhs financial issues recently we have been seeing that nhs having a financial but still it is not declining at so much level still it is higher rate of jobs in the like labs journey or uk as compared to usa so if you are going to get a, as early as possible job go for lab if you need a well-planned dedicated two year three year maybe three year and you you think that i can face the peer pressure i can feel i i, I will be very motivated for the usmle journey i have the money go for usmle okay and uh, uh, next important question this was usmle versus lab our next important question is now next important is you lab versus mrcp because many of the student uh, also has this question what is MRCP and PLAB? Which is the best for me? Because I have recently got a message on my WhatsApp that uh, uh, what should be uh, like in previous webinar, our general overview of all the exams. We have a live section. In this live section, you will also see that we have explained more than 15 international medical exams in a video. And uh, we, uh, I invited Dr. Khadija Chaudhary and uh, uh, he, uh, she also has uh, been very like, active and explained all the details about these MRCP versus lab and all other detail. And I, I explain mostly the 15 plus international medical exams. So you can watch this video, explore your plan, which is best for you, what are the resources 
and who can support you what will be the money management what will be your dedicated plan so first of all question is mrcp versus lab mrcp is a clinical exam and it is a degree awarding lab is a certification the one difference is that lab is a certification exam certification exam certification exam okay mrcp is a degree awarding like fcps is a degree mrcp is like that degree awarding of course if you are doing mrcp you you will have the more chance to get the high level of job registrar level job if like suppose if any student or any doctor doing fcps in pakistan during these fcps if he or she can do mrcp and after doing the residency when uh, he or she will go to uk and apply there will be a higher post senior registrar or registrar level post but during the lab journey you will get a junior level of the like post as compared to the mrcp because mrcp has a more value more extensive exams clinical structured exams because it includes part 1 and uh, part 2 pcs exam is very difficult to explain this video in our uh, other se section of the video so lab is very easy and as early as possible if you want gmc registration go for lab so next question which is best for me okay uh, because many student ask which is best for me the answer is if you are undergraduate student like you are in final year you are in fourth year or you have just graduated just graduated i prefer go for lab uh, i think dr tala will correctify me because uh, for that students who are fresh graduate as early as possible their goal should be getting gmc registration and doing some researches in inside this don't waste the time to getting residency in pakistan but any student who has already inducted in residency and not able to getting the labs and jobs and he or she wants to continue the pakistani residency or any other country residency and they can alongside with the residency they can start the mrcp journey and during this journey uh, they can uh, like prepare for mrcp and then after the mrcp is clear like then they can apply the job so i will be inviting dr talha to clarify this point lab versus mrcp uh, it was my opinion and it was my suggestion no i think that's uh, that's uh, that's very 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 correct uh, uh, for fresh graduates uh, those who are doing their internship or those who are uh, who just completed their internship is uh, obviously the the best pathway to move to move forward with um Uh, but yeah if you have uh, let's say at least a couple of years or 3 years you already have a 2 um, 3 years of experience uh, and you haven't yet 2 uh, 3 years of experience back home in the uh, in the relevant specialty and you haven't yet started even for lab uh, journey yet so in that way because the same lab with the same level of effort and with the same level of um, 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 of a struggle you can clear the membership exams and that would be uh, much more beneficial for you because you will be having a post graduate qualification as well you will get the gmc registration after clearing the mrcp or mrcs or um, the other relevant specialty post graduate qualification as well and then you will be able to apply for uh, middle grade level jobs which are not very saturated in uk the junior level jobs are very saturated so you will so in that case definitely and thirdly uh, there has been new category of people uh, who have uh, who have done plab they are done with plab they uh, but they unfortunately somehow were not able to or did not due to some reason did not opt to go to uk uh, at that point or could not uh, secure a job at that point and um, um even for them to strengthen their cv and to move forward with the job application process mrcp uh, is the mrcp or mrcs or the relevant qualification according to the specialty would be the best uh, option to move forward with so it's it's uh, it definitely like this dr kamran if you are into a residency uh, of your choice of course uh, and uh, you want to pursue that residency uh, you want to pursue that uh, specialty as a career in future as well so it's always a good idea to give the membership exams rather than uh,
um, PLAP because the membership exam would add to your CV for your own country as well. Uh, it would add to your CV for um, the future, the job, the job application in UK as well. It will give you the GMC registration as well after completing all the membership exams. So, uh, but do remember that PLAB is relatively easier than the membership exams. So if uh, again, someone can uh, compare, if we are again uh, comparing the level of difficulty uh, in that case, uh, and about someone due to some any circumstances one does not want to uh, give the to make that level of struggle and uh, in that case the plab would be the the, the easier route to go forward with um, so i totally agree with you thank you so much exactly exactly because uh, uh, mrcp is a difficult one as dr talla has explained this and plab is the easiest pathway no doubt you have the more uh, like the chances of getting the higher quality job but the thing is that when you will be as early as possible getting GMC registration, you will be improving your CV more to getting the more like a uh, valuable job. So there are a relativity is depending upon your uh, position, what you are doing at this time. If you are freshly graduate, do lab, okay, don't waste the time. If you have stuck with some other like uh, schedule in Pakistan or other countries, go for MRCP of course. So we will be taking the questions answer session. So I will be reading the questions from the comment section so now, and then I will be replying with discussion with Dr. Tala. So the first question uh, I have received uh, is from the Dr. Anas Mostafa Jahangir. Dr. Anas Mostafa Jahangir, how much time uh, is the OET exam is valid for? How is the OET exam valid for? Dr. Tala, uh, oh, I think okay. it was a two year. Uh, I think it's exactly. due to recent change. It has been changed. Something Dr. Tala will explain uh, this answer. Yeah, I think as well. It's uh, last I checked. I think it 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 was two years, but they have been increasing it to three years uh, due to the uh, COVID. Uh, yeah situation they increased it to three mm -hmm. years and then they increased it to three years again and uh, they have been very flexible uh, with those people who have uh, you know they mm -hmm. completed the 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 the, the plap 2 exam and somehow some some of the months have passed or they had just crossed that two year uh, deadline so they have been flexible with uh, with a lot of people as well you can always write to them and you can tell them that uh, I have uh, somehow crossed that period, but I've recently given my lab too, which can also serve as an evidence of my English language skills. Uh, so you can always write to them and see if they uh, you uh, they can. There are always uh, there are some alternate. Um, uh, alternate, let's say, alternate um, uh, routes as well. Like you can get a certificate from this person or this person or that person, and he can testify, and that can happen. So it's always a good idea that even if you have uh, uh, if the deadline is two years, uh, according to uh, according to my uh, as I recall, uh, the last yes, deadline exactly. has been two years. Actually, but it is three years. Usually, I have been seen that they have been changed the route of uh, the three year. Uh, uh, now, but the, uh, the most important information is that Dr. Tala has explained that there are some of the ways uh, you can, while applying the job, if you, uh, your OET is, has expired and you have that other ways, Dr. Tala has explained that you can get yourself like a testimonial from any of the like resident and anything, and then they can increase the chance and they can like show the some flexibility. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tala, uh, for answering this. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight that GMC uh, have been very flexible, not only with this, but with a lot of other things as well. So even if so, if you have any questions re related to anything, uh, it's always a good route to write to GMC directly as well. GMC at GMC dot UK dot uh, their their official email on their on their website. If you write to them, they always come back to you with an answer. Um, of course, they can take some time. So if you have any queries that you know might be some that you might not have found a clear answer to uh, you can always write to them and since uh, we are talking about the individual circumstances uh, so it's always a good idea for uh, to explain your own circumstances this has been my, my circumstances so far so what would be the best route for me to go forward and usually they are helpful they come up with a good advice thank you oh uh, thank you dr Dalla, for your answer so next question 
uh, the question from uh, Dr. Status Hut. Uh, sir, after we start the residency, how of, uh, of often we can come back to Pakistan? So what will be your answer, Dr. Tala? After, so, uh, sir, after we start the residency, how often we can come back to Pakistan? So, hi. so first off, thank you so much for the question. Uh, uh, so I would, I think there are, uh, I would I'll answer that in two ways. How often can you come back and how soon can you come back after starting? So usually people, um, we have uh, in UK, in most of the clinical jobs, the annual leaves are somewhere between 20, 28, around 28, 28 to even in some jobs, they are somewhere around 40 as well. But usually um, um, six months is a is a it's a every six months you can you know get uh, uh, your annual leaves and uh, the good thing about uh, uk practice and the uk jobs is that you know in pakistan we were entitled to uh, some of the leaves as well and annual leaves as well but there was no concept that you had to take it and you were encouraged not to take your annual leaves here if you are for example in a rotation of six months and then you will move to the next rotation and you have not utilized your annual leave for that rotation for that six months duration let's say if they were 14 leaves or say for 15 leaves even the hr would personally and your consultants would personally encourage you to take those leaves because you are supposed to take your annual leaves anyway so uh, usually it's uh, uh, the the average duration i think would be you can you can easily uh, come back after you can easily plan a trip to Pakistan uh, twice a year. Uh, but of course, that depends on your circumstances. Um, you, and how soon can you come back? You can come back take a couple of months at least to settle before requesting for an, for an annual leave. So um, I and you should request for an annual leave at least uh, four to six weeks before. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Can you? Uh, yeah. Yes. Now it's fine. Now it's fine. Uh, oh, previously it was interrupted. So. Thank you very much. So. Like you can come back. Come on. Uh, Dr. Tala, again, your voice is interrupting. Can you please readjust yourself? Your voice is interrupting. Yeah. No? Yes, it's coming now. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so uh, I was saying that uh own player uh, of course keeping in view with the requirements of the rota and it is usually not a problem to come back in four to six months after the job and you can plan at least two trips quite easily back home uh, with a with a with a with a usual clinical job uh, i think that that should that should answer the question hopefully Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Tala, for your kind answer. Next question uh, from the Dr. Oppo Reno 5. Sir, I need USA or Canada visa. Uh, actually, it's irrelevant for, for this series. We are discussing about the UK, but you can text us on the WhatsApp and we will be guiding you about USA and Canada visa and what are the opportunities for a doctor. You can watch our video on uh, what are the different international medical exams. I have explained more than 15 international medical exams on the live section. You can find a video and then you can find how you can go to USA or Canada. OK, thank you. And next question is from Dr. Muhammad Noman. Is it true that if we have done internship in emergency medicine from Aga Khan University, and Shifa in MBBS journey, it will be more helpful for as as compared to others. Uh, so thank you so much. Answer this question. Uh, yes, thank you so much for the question. 
so uh, i i would i'm uh, i would say that i i don't think that it's it's going to be a big difference uh, in terms of uh, let's say uh, what would you say like it it can definitely if you have done internship from aku uh, it would it would add this to your cv because aku is obviously the one of the best medical institutes and uh, the affiliated hospital is one of the best uh, training hospitals in pakistan so it would add to your cv but other than that like uh, officially it wouldn't change anything you you would still have to follow the same pathway like everyone else for registration for jobs for interviews and everything of that sort but it can of course definitely uh, let's say uh, improve your chances uh, um, especially if uh, for example uh, it can improve, strengthen your cv for example or it can if you have of course uh, you know if you've got that level of training uh, it can help you uh, in settling well in uh, your nhs job as well but other than that uh, uh, i can't see if it, it it would change any of the uh, standard requirements in the procedure of coming into the of coming into a uk job and continuing it okay thank you dr tala for your kind answer so i hope dr noman has got the answer next is from dr khushnud mohsin dr khushnud mohsin is asking is it necessary to the house job in your home country like pakistan cannot we do house job in another country like uh, maybe he will be in foreign country or maybe he will be the international medical graduate so can you please clarify that if uh, like a degree or any uh, at, uh, internship or a house job is outside of the pakistan but the resident and the passport is from the pakistan is it valid for uk pathway yes yes it's 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 valid as 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 long as it's uh, it means it meets the requirements of an approved internship as uh, laid down by the gmc like uh, um, it has the six months uh, in medicine six months in surgery uh, 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 so it's not it's not going to be a problem you should have one year internship you should have uh, after the internship you also need a valid uh, medical license uh, so if you are doing your internship in some other country so you should then get you should have the a full medical license from that country uh, because you as i mentioned for getting the gmc registration after clearing plap 2 for getting gmc registration you need a good standing certificate uh, from the from the relevant medical and dental council so uh, as long as you're registered fully registered with the medical and dental council of that country after the one year internship it shouldn't be a okay thank you so much dr dala thank you okay so the next question we will continuing from uh, dr masood javed dr masood javed is asking is it possible for an international medical graduate to get into cardio thoracic surgery training after fy2 okay and how difficult it could be for an imgs Uh, thank you thank you so much for the question so definitely after completing fy2 we can uh, because uh, after completing fy2 we are eligible to apply for the surgery training we won't directly apply to cardio thoracic surgery you will first have to will first have to complete the core surgical training uh, and after completing the core surgical training uh, only then for for the for the cardio thoracic uh, surgery training so you cannot directly apply for cardio thoracic surgery training after fy2 but you can apply for core surgical training and after core surgical training you can then opt for the for the relevant sub speciality in the surgery um, in surgery so and it's not it's not very difficult a lot of imgs manage to do that you just need to uh, you just need to you know make your portfolio you just need to make sure what are the requirements to apply for surgery training as I, as i had mentioned earlier that uh, we have to apply for training jobs via orient and different specialities have different requirements so for surgery training there are uh, some requirements like uh, and uh, there there is usually a marked mark system like for example in pakistan we have a central induction system in which we have marks 
for example research carries this much marks experience carries this much marks this thing carries this much marks so the system uh, um, there is a whole system of, uh, according to which you have to build your portfolio to uh, to be successful in your application for the surgery for the surgery training if you manage to do that uh, it's 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 not extremely difficult to get the training so it's definitely okay. doable thank you thank you so much dr tala so i will be going to the next question uh, from the dr masood javed uh, the same person uh, also discuss about cardiology residency we have to go through internal medicine pathway and yes, we exactly. can start directly mm -hmm. cardiology training after fy2 yeah yes exactly so just like uh, in case of surgery you first have to you know spend some time in the general surgery before you go to the specific sub surgical speciality so same is it with the uh, with the medical sub, sub specialties you first uh, do the internal medicine training you spend time in internal medicine as it is in pakistan a lot of the times uh, so, so you first uh, do the internal medicine training and then for the higher training you can go to the to the sub speciality like uh, whatever you choose to like rheumatology endocrinology cardiology or whatever is your uh, choice so first you have to you know opt from internal medicine training or core surgical training or core psychiatry training um, so uh, there are some specialties where you can directly get into like radiology gynae and obs gp uh, but uh, in case of cardiology you, you have to go through the internal medicine pathway okay thank you thank you dr tala uh, let me go to the next question uh, next question is from uh, dr q a jolia uh, how easy it is to get into urology training in uk uh, thank you so much for the question so i don't have as i mentioned as i had mentioned about my background i don't have any specific exposure to Uh, surgical specialities as of such but as i uh, but as much as i do know of the system as i mentioned a uh, lot of imgs that i know uh, and um, some of my friends that i do know they are planning to go for the surgical specialities and they are building their portfolios accordingly and they are getting the surgery training and after com successful completion of surgical core surgical training they would definitely apply for the higher surgical training in the relevant department so as long as you are committed it shouldn't be an issue it's definitely doable okay thank you dr talab for your kind thank answer you. next uh, the question from dr masood javed als from pakistan is acceptable in uk or not uh, so als uh, is not acceptable in the sense that you uh, will not have to repeat it you will have to repeat it once you get the job in uk in for example in an acute medicine or uh, in emergency medicine you will have to uh, uh, you will have to uh, complete an als as approved by the uk research council but uh, it is definitely something that will it, it it would definitely add to your cv for the job application process it would uh, be helpful for that it will be helpful for your own clinical skills and it would be helpful uh, to write in your cv of course that you have done an als from pakistan rather than saying that you have not done an als in pakistan but uh, in terms of uh, acceptance uh, in the way that you, it's 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 not accepted in the way that you will have to uh, complete it anyway after coming to uk starting a job here you will be required to if you are in a in a job of course uh, in a, in a, to it uh, uh an als that is uh, approved by the research council in the uk so it's not approved uh, in that sense but if you uh, but it's definitely worth doing okay thank you so next thank question you. is from the dr abdul mukit dr abdul mukit what is the starting salary sir starting salary of course we will be discussing the important point also what is the salary package for the starting doctor in uk so uh, yes so this is a very good question so for fy2 level jobs uh, the 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 sort of the at the moment the uh, annual salary annual starting salary would be somewhere around uh, 35 to 40000 uh, uh, per year 
35 to 40000 pound per year so and uh, for so the minimum even for an fy2 which is of course the minimum the level which any img from uh, uh, who, who has completed one year internship from the country, from his home country would join so you will be uh, getting a uh, getting at least uh, at least a takeaway uh, of somewhere around 2500 uh, pounds per uh, per month after excluding tax so uh, that is the that i think you are looking for okay thank you dr tala uh, for your kind answers and all the almost almost i am seeing here uh, of course uh, we have uh, answered all the questions let me see if any question has left no i think we have explained all the questions now we will be discussing few of the questions i have been receiving on my personal whatsapp so the question i have been receiving from uh, like the personal uh, chat is that first is uh, question is that uh, what is the um, like total expenditure of the whole journey uh, like we have already explained this question detail you can uh, come uh, like go back on the video in the expensive section expenditure section we have discussed about it roughly about 12 lakh up to 15 lakh it can vary depending upon inflation rate okay the next is that uh, due to uh, the like insecurities about the uh, like uh, jobs uh, how much time it will be taken uh, after uh, clearing the flap to get the job dr tala uh, how much time uh, it usually will be taken to get the job after clearing the flap so thank you so much for the question so uh, it has been usually uh, last year while we were giving flap to exams and we were uh, it was in the air the talk was in the air that the average waiting time is somewhere around six months and yes it did take most of our uh, friends uh, to it, it took them somewhere around uh, three to six months to secure their first job but recently in the last few months uh, we have been hearing some feedback that is not very optimistic and we think that the that the job uh, that the average time for job it has uh, average time for getting job has increased from uh, three to six months to at least uh, six to twelve months. So even for uh, some people, it is taking like uh, somewhere uh, more, more, somewhere around six to nine months, or uh, in very uh, or very uncommonly even up to twelve months to get the first offer. Uh, but uh, that's again my uh, request would be to uh, keep uh, uh, to keep per persisting, to keep persistent here, and uh, to keep improving the job application, keep improving the CV, keep applying, and keep focusing on the quality of application. And uh, we should eventually get it. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for the detailed answer about this question. So I yeah. hope the uh, the view, the uh, person who has questioned this will be listening and maybe he will be listen this answer and uh, the next is uh, uh, sir uh, what is the uh, like a difficult point in the lab two where i have to cover uh, myself beforehand before going to the uk uh so um, if i understood the question correctly so regard we are uh, asking they, they are asking regarding flap 2 so regarding flap yes, 2 before going to the, the, asking about what is the difficult point in the flap 2 that can be improved beforehand like before going to uk uh, taking the exams uh, what will be the difficult point that we can already cover uh, like this like what is the, the most difficult point and how to cover it like this is a summary of the so first. yeah so there is a i i don't think that anything is uh, there is very difficult uh, according to difficulty level there shouldn't be any problem uh, there shouldn't be a lot of problem uh, but in terms of importance i would repeat the most important thing is your communication skills and the two uh, requests that i would uh, um, 
I would request everyone who is about to go to PLAB2, the two requests that I would make to them are one, kindly complete all the scenarios, kindly uh, complete uh, all the scenarios uh, from uh, the notes, whichever academy you have opted from the notes before going to UK. Um, by completing, I mean kindly practice, please practice uh, all the scenarios at least once with your friends. So that's one advice. And the second advice would be to uh, focus on your communication skills. By communication skills, I mean to, uh, you know, try to uh, provide as much as empathy as you can. Try to, and uh, the second part, try to be, try to, you know, uh, get that natural flow of yours active and uh, try to be natural and try to um, focus on your interpersonal skills as much as you can. Time management is something that would, with practice, that would improve and hopefully in the mocks that would uh, that would improve a lot so these are some of the few points that to keep in mind but uh, other than that nothing specific that is very difficult that is not doable okay so the next question is uh, next question uh, from uh, the student is that sir uh, how difficult is the lab one i am a, a fourth year a medical uh, student and uh, now if is it okay if i can start in this case so what will be your answer student is a fourth year medical student and how difficult is a plab one is it okay if i start now or i should start after graduation yeah whatever so what is your answer now uh i i i i don't think it is necessary to uh and i don't think it would it would uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it would make a lot of difference um uh, if we start at fourth year i think we can consider starting at final year uh, if that's okay but at fourth year i i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't myself i wouldn't start uh, worrying about it at, at that but yeah definitely gather as much information as we can that is the only thing i think that we can do at fourth year uh, in fourth year uh, medical school but in terms of exams i wouldn't start actually uh, making a prep uh, until final year at least okay thank you uh, thank for you. the answer so the next uh, we are discussing about the answer like questions i have receiving on the whatsapp for all the questions on the comment section we have discussed it a uh, few of the further questions on the comment section we will be discussing also uh, let me complete the questions received on my whatsapp so the next question is that uh, sir my uh, my uh, husband is uh, has done the my husband has done lab and uh, now i want to do the mrcp i uh, i am very worried about that still my husband has not got the job in uk so what is your suggestion so the scenario is that uh, a one student question that my husband has done the lab but still in finding job, in the process of job hunting. Now I want to start. So I should start, I, I just want to start MRCP. What is your plan? So what will be the answer to that question? So uh, first of all, congratulations that, uh, the, uh, that your husband has completed PLAB and got the GMC registration. So he should, I think, continue as we mentioned, as we had discussed the job hunting process uh, he should continue that and uh, whether you want to start mrcp it would largely depend upon your prior experience like if you have uh, uh, if you have as we mentioned a couple at least a couple of years of experience or three years of experience in the relevant speciality so in that case yes mrcp would be a would be a good pathway a good a good place to start with and uh, to, to to proceed and then to get the gmc registration via this pathway uh, but if you do not have any uh, post internship experience uh, in that case uh, i think uh, still it's better to go for plab than mrcp okay thank you so much thank now so we much. will be covering the last question uh, from the dr abdul mukit from the uh, our comment section can you please explain how much we can save after all the expenses this is like so, saving 
in you so that yeah so that would again depend upon uh, where you are living uh, your expenses for example um, what would be the usual expenses while living in uk um, um, the major chunk of the expense would be the rent and that would uh, depend upon again where you are living if you're living in a big city like london or edinburgh or uh, somewhere like that you might end up paying uh, a rent of um, let's say a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds per month at least. Uh, but if you're living at a at a at a at a small city, you might you know get uh, a place with a rent uh, around five six hundred pounds per month even. And uh, then uh, comes the uh, the groceries and things like that. And for a single person, that shouldn't take uh, not that shouldn't take more than um three to five hundred uh pounds anyway then traveling and things like that uh so it would largely depend upon whether you are single whether you are with family where you are living what is your lifestyle like at the moment but on average most people they do end up uh, uh if you are if you are planning to save uh a sum amount and if you are uh you know, if you are, you you will be definitely adjusting your expenses accordingly. So you will be able to save uh, save an appropriate amount. Uh, you you should be able to save some appropriate amount every month, pretty easily. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Talha, for the kind answers. So here so the much. question uh, has been completed. So we really appreciate for all the viewers for listening our webinar. So I will be just briefly telling about Sims Matrap. My name is Dr. Kamran Khaja. I have passed all the USML steps. I am MD from USA. And Sims Matrap is Shmeem Institute of Medical Sciences, in which we are providing you the high yield resources and a free lecture live only on YouTube. You can come and join our USMLE first aid series lectures. And as well as we are producing our MRCP and other series lectures. This platform is now running free on the YouTube live lecture series at uh, like 8 p.m. to the 10 p.m. You can join here. This is best and the best lectures and best of the best resources. And this is the unique platform where we are not just providing the lecture. We are providing you the free guide, free consultation, and 24 by 7 availability on the WhatsApp. If you have any question, you can come, you can ask. Okay. So this is your platform. This is for your guidance. If you need, you can WhatsApp us. All our links are given. You can subscribe on the YouTube and you can subscribe uh, so that you will be notified our our lectures, our webinars and uh, we have explained the 15 plus international medical exams uh, our Indian student or Pakistani student can opt after doing MBBS or any equivalent equivalent degree in any international country. You can go outside and internationally. My advice is to go outside to do not waste your time in Pakistan and all the foreign medical graduate students and all the international and whatever national art from India, from Pakistan, from Nepal they should live for uh, a better life in usa uk australia or other options you can explore these options on my video in which explain 15 international medical exams and you can join our uh, whatsapp group for more updates for question answer series and more learning resources i hope you enjoyed this video and i really appreciate dr Tala farooq uh, who has explained this uh, the all detail very beautifully and i am uh, really really thankful dr tala for joining us and uh, thank you so much thank yeah. you yes so if you have any issue uh, like if you have any issue you have any problem uh, you can come to us you can join our sessions you can answer at any time okay we will be conveying your questions to our ambassadors to our uk or us residents if i am not able to answer your question i will be sending to dr talha i will be sending to dr gibran i will be sending to dr khadija i will be sending all other ambassadors they will be replying to you okay so it's your platform stay here and keep uh, like in touch with us and this is the end of the sessions and and uh, in the last but not the least this is a valuable information 
delivered honestly and with dedication by Dr. Tala. Thank you, Dr. Tala. And uh, signing thank off. You so much. From thank the you so streaming. much. So thank you so much. See you in the next videos. Thank you. Bye bye.